Okay, are we live? Okay, are we live? Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration. Philip B, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and I did spend just a little bit of time off stream uh, doing the slightly tedious task of updating all of these LTN settings and train stop names since that little minor disaster from yesterday. Uh, I decided we would move all the old Byte Research data uh, in by train, but I'll just keep that on a separate combinator to show that it's obviously supposed to be temporary. Um, but yeah, I think we probably uh, have room to drop off all of the appropriate inputs now. These builds are not that fast at, as consumers, so uh, we don't need to request a ton of resources. And there's just not that many different resources coming in for most of them from trains. So I imagine we'll have some room left over after these trains arrive. We've got four coming in for this one. Biomass has arrived. Fantastic. Iron gears, iron plate. Glass advanced circuits. Copper. Coke. And that just leaves steel, steel. Uh, automation cores. Oh, I think... Wait, wait, wait. I think we were doing automation cores locally here, weren't we? Oops. And let me guess. There's no reason to put them into the rail network. Everything else is going to be mall stuff, isn't it? Inserters. Um... Yeah, this is literally just mole stuff. How do we make automation cores? Iron sticks, copper plate, iron gear. We could poach some of the resources that we've got on the spot to make that happen. Um, copper plate, we're actually all pushing into one container here. How much did I ask for? One, two, three, four train loads worth. So it's going to be like one, two, hundred stacks, three, four. So it shouldn't be overfilled. That's okay, I guess. Uh, what if we put down. Uh, core. And we also need iron sticks. Ravna. I guess I could push iron sticks to the left over here. Or iron plate, rather. And we could put... Oh, it's going to be outside the beacon. Uh, never mind. Hmm. Is that the only place we're dropping off iron plate? It is, isn't it? And we just need two machines to make this work, but... It, put, it, it crosses the line so that we would need another beacon, unless... Uh, if I put this over here... And then put that one right up next to it. Al alternatively, we could leave this here. Do what I was just about to do. Um... 
This needs copper plate, right? Yeah. Put this here. Put this here. This will be iron stick. And... I guess... Like this. We need some filters. And this one's copper. And then we do a little direct insert. We also need uh, gears, which was why I was about to build this over here. Hmm. I think I'll put this over here, actually. And we could just long arm like that. Make sure it's balanced. Um, and then iron sticks. Uh, and then this will just go straight up here. Alright, that turned out to be not too messy to add in. This actually looks pretty tidy. And it's already saturated. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, so that's blank, red, green, uh, blue, military, and of course it's prerequisite, all getting built. Fantastic. Alright, back to the mall then. Uh, let's send you home. And I might just take the train. Alright. Add some tags. Blank. Red. Green. Is here. Blue. Uh, military. And... A bite of research data. Very nice. Now we have one block instead of six. And... How many machines is this? Ten? Uh, nine advanced assembly machines? As opposed to... what? 194 plus... 88. So about 280 uh, assembly machine twos. Now we just have to drain these out as a priority. I think I already added a priority to this one. Uh, so I just want to copy the combinator setting. Wait, what? No, 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 no. God damn it. What just happened? Go back to the depot. What the hell? Where did I... Oh, that one was legit. Did I copy this down here? No? 
Yes. How the hell did I not just copy the provider station settings? Shift right. Shift left. So these two... You're going to drop that off at Green Provider? What? No. No, go over here. Wait till empty. Return to depot. Honestly. Probably have to rebalance that because it probably made... Yeah, there's more uh, Vita Research data in the left side now. Okay. That should be all of them. So these are all high priority pickup, uh, which means we're going to drain out the old blocks first. And once they're reasonably empty... We can actually decon them. I think I've already switched off all of the input requests for these things. Nope. Not this one, apparently. Weird. Alright, we need to consume science faster. Maybe I should make more than one of these labs. Or maybe I should just make better... Well, we've already got a lot of speed here. It's capable of almost our end goal. This is just a really expensive recipe. Okay. Uh, I do not need... Explosives right now. And we already updated. Ooh, they're saturated. Rough data storage subs are already saturated. Unless we're not taking them upstairs. We are. So we're missing advanced circuits now. What's the problem with advanced circuits? What's your problem? How are you not... What? Oh. I think the belt pushed too many items over to one side. And we just happen to have... We just happen to stop production at barely more than one train load. Okay. Um, but anyway. Oh, well, that's right. I wanted to... I did. I did increase advanced circuit builds here. Did we change this from being wood? Why is there no... Oh, I didn't change this filter? Bruh. Well, that's going to increase our red circuit throughput by 50%. Marcel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Actually, yeah, this would be worse with a higher stack size. Um... Well, since it takes time to load 200 stack size trains anyway, I'm going to try putting like 30 stacks in the front with provide stack threshold 100. Let's see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, maybe we need more circuit builds. 
What's the theoretical max rate from this? If there's no wood? 72 per second. And if we're playing catch up, we're looking for... 100 per second to make blank data cards. Damn. Also, this one's stuck as well. What? Okay. Do we really... Mm. Maybe I should change that one as well a little bit. Okay. Should we make some more advanced circuit builds or is it actually being overkill for what we eventually need? I know we don't need more blue circuits. 55, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I think we'll probably do one more of these. It's not that many more machines after all. If only to play catch up. Maybe when we've got tier 9 modules we'll only need a, a block or two. There we go. We're still emptying this out. Uh, what are you getting rid of? Stone tablets. Plastic. We're almost out of plastic here. This is already fine. This is just getting rid of stone tablets and steel. Well, there's no more steel. And this one's already good. Fantastic. Are there construction bots here? Yes, there are. Oh, that's one way to do it as well. Get the construction bots involved. Alright, we'll come back to that. Shall we take another shot at a fast ship? What is going on here? No path. You're trying to go to the new build. Which apparently is not entirely in the robot network. So let's just get the construction train. Wait for inactive... And that should clear up the traffic jam. Looks good. Are these all waiting for rare metals? I guess so. How fast does it fill? Pretty quickly. Not super, super quickly. And I really wish I had uh, gotten the version where loaders can go straight into cargo wagons. Even with stack size 200, we could have had trains just filled up like boop. And just have one big container to load both cargo wagons. Yeah, that'd be nice. Alright, looks like that's sorted out now. 
What are you doing? Waiting for a depot stop, even though we've got depot stops all over the place that are... that are empty? Don't understand why... And yeah, let's go upstairs. Play with some spaceships today. Uh, I think we... Is this it? Yeah. We didn't park this thing back home yet. Didn't we anchor it here? Ish. One off. I think it'll be easier if I just add a constant and do this again. So we're just gonna say... I don't know. 376. Anchor. Using right. To left. And watch. And anchor. There we go. Uh, so let's pump this back this way. And I guess pump this back this way. I don't think we're going to keep much of the shape of this ship. We're definitely not... We're definitely not going to squeeze, like, a whole different ship in up here. So let's empty out the antimatter. Uh, that flows back to these tanks. Yes, it does. Cool, cool, cool. Let's uh, take another crack at it, shall we? Don't need this anymore. Alright, so... Kind of expected it to be power bottlenecked, but it was worse than I thought. We have... Oh, and it was much faster than I thought it would be if it didn't have any power bottleneck. So, if we can keep the hull stress around 1200 or something, and have uh, 12 engines, we're probably looking at 300 speed. Um... 20 times 2 megawatt. We had 40 megawatt, and I think we honestly need, like, 50 to 100. No, more, more like, like, 70 to 100 or so. Which, I mean, we could either cram in 50 fluid isothermic generators, or, you know, we could make a high temp turbine generator. Um... If I only use one of these, and we really do only need one, it's not going to be very symmetrical. We need... Uh, how are we going to fit this? I, I don't think we're fitting... I don't think we're fitting another... Antimatter reactor set up in this thing. Not with the shape of these engines. Which is unfortunate because I kind of like the shape of this ship. Oh, I didn't mean to kill the uh, shield positions. Those were pretty effective. Maybe we can work around those. Actually, I'm pretty sure there was, like, one piece of wall that got hit when a big rock hit one of these shields. 
but it's already about as close as it can be. I mean, maybe we just do that. Is that still streamlined? Uh, yes it is. Doesn't look as nice. Maybe something like that. Fifty-five, welcome in, if I didn't say so. But I think I did. My memory is a broken steel trap. Uh, yeah, we do have streamline here. So, I'd only be needing one high temp turbine generator. But then it's not going to be symmetrical unless we, like, stretch this out slightly. On the horizontal. Alternatively, we could do it kind of like this. There really isn't room. Hmm. I was quite happy with this design. But if possible, I don't want to pay that much space. When we really, really don't need 2 gigawatt. So we need 2... I, I, I do want to have a 2x2. Two two. We only get 400 megawatt maximum if we only have one antimatter reactor. But also it's way less efficient with the consumption of the... Uh, uh, antimatter canisters. So I do want to have 2x2 two two for these. And we need two uh, temperature... High temp heat exchangers to get more than 560 megawatt anyway. On second thought, do we really need more than one times 560 megawatt? Maybe not if we have accumulators? We'll see. Uh, in any case, I need to figure out something half as good as this. This was from the Victory ship. Which we've got parked here. How much hull stress is it again? 20... 2900. But that's with the, uh... That's with the Nexus costing us like 2000. Oh, that's container stress. The Nexus doesn't cost hull stress. Yeah, so this thing's like 3k. We don't want to be at 3k. Well, not for this ship, anyway. I, I, I might do a bigger speed ship after this one. But I really want to, like, try and make a small-ish fast one. Are you missing pipes on the left side? Uh, probably. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle of, like, rethinking this one. I'll just leave that there for the moment. Because the shape of it was pretty good. Uh, um, I don't know, actually. I didn't see exactly where the ship got hit. And I'm worried that it's like one of these right here. Which means these shields would have to probably move up. I can pick a dolly some, can't I? That might be better. Um, anyway, let's design a power plant. We're looking for two of these, probably, maybe. I mean, if it's going to be symmetrical, it's going to be two of those. 
And if I'm going to put this here, then pipes would have to be something like this. That doesn't really work. This would still have to be an underground because of this side connection. Okay, so let's say we put that there. Water here would have to go back up to here. That's not looking so good. We need how many? I think it's like 2.5. I forget, I, I always forget how we calculated. Oh, here we go. Max consumption, 66 water per second. Uh, sorry, low temp steam per second. And these things spit out how much? 2% of input energy is unused and contained in the output steam. What are the signs? 2% of input energy. I don't get it. Where did I get the idea? Oh, here we go. 415 degree steam, 375 per second. Uh... Is... We would supposedly need 5.6 of these per machine, really? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. I think we figured out that technically we need like five and a bit for three of them for this ship, but it's probably fine kind of thing. But how the hell did I decide on that? Mm. Didn't we literally just test it? Physically? Do we still have that testing set? Here it is, here it is. Okay, so we've got... 6 to 9... How did I figure that out? 375 times 6 is 2.25 thousand. And this says it can consume... Well, that, that's not right. 66.6 .6 per second times 9 is like 600. I don't get it. But I do remember figuring out, oh wait, yes, that is the math, and proved it, that we need nine of these for every six of these. Simon and Knoist, welcome in. Moving those shields up gives more room for the generator, it does indeed. And yeah, if we remove even one of these, we're going to see um, steam stops coming out of some of these all the time. It starts stuttering based on the output bottleneck. Okay, so six to nine. Um, six over nine is 0.67. Yeah, in other words, it's 2 to 3, or 1 to 1.5. So two of these should be fine. Should provide no bottleneck, right? And if I can put them here... Um...
This would go here. We could use some vanilla storage tanks. Since we're using this space anyway. And then the only problem is water has to go back up there as well. Maybe we could move this down one. And... what? That's no good. I mean, I guess we could, like, underneath through here. Mm, I don't love that. Alternatively, put this back up. This has to go all the way back here as well. No, that doesn't seem very good. With the pipe spaghetti. Hmm. Something like this, perhaps? How many tiles is that? Nine. And then this would have to go here. Because that barely reaches. Not a fan. Starscape, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hello there. Gotta say, your voice is very calming. Thank you. How long have you been on this SA, uh, SE playthrough? Since time immemorial. Uh, game time is 38 and a half days. So that would just go up there, I guess. I don't think there's a good... I, I don't think there's going to be a good way to make this look all right and compact with just the one high temp turbine generator. I was really happy with this design. I mean, look at this. But we really don't need that much power uh, for a smaller one. And I really do want to see how, how much we can squeeze out of like a thousand whole stress ship or something like that. What if... The fact that space underground pipes are only five tiles is very irritating a lot of the time. I mean, I could, like, put these here, but that's... Then there's no way for the water to get back in either. Something like this. Well, this would probably still go here. And that would have to be, like, all the way through this way. Still not very good. There is a middle tile for just one of these, which means it doesn't work out symmetrically with like a 2x2 two two console or 2x2 two two antimatter reactors. What if these were like this? Oh, might be getting somewhere now. Okay, so water can just make its way through there. We are going to have to have the high temp steam input over here. 
But then we've got the prob the same like crisscross problem where this needs to get back here and this needs to get back here. Unless Unless we underground pipe all the way through here. Hmm. What if... This was here? Okay. That goes there. We've only got 3x3 three three and, like, 5x5 five five containers, though. So this space in the middle is going to go to waste. Oh, also... That does not go there. That goes there. And these ones... Like so. And then this would have to go all the way around. Or we could just use a... Like a long one. Ten tiles, you say? Sure. Wait, that's not right. We could squeeze in, uh, it's only two of them, but we could squeeze in a couple of the chests for IO here, I guess. We're probably just going to put them here and here, though. Okay. Can't really fit the water containers where I want to. There's no way to do it like this. Where are my three bees? Five, ten, twelve. Seven and seven is going to connect with this. So wait, seven and five. There we go. That's not too bad. I can kind of tolerate that. So we could either pipe this like this. These look terrible. Or we could use this as the basis to put these back here. And just move these a little bit. Wait. That actually does offer us a good convenient connection point for this. Maybe that's fine actually. That honestly doesn't seem that bad. Hold on, I almost... Oh no, I did forget. Duh. Water from the main one. If we put these together, how are we going to deal with the water? We'd have to make more room here. Something a bit like this. And if I was going to do that, I would bring these back. So they line up. And 
and then definitely want to use these if we're going to do this. And we do still need to get low temp steam into these guys. Okay, that's not the worst. With this version... I, I really just don't like what we're doing with this space in the middle with this version. Is the only thing. I think we're going to go with the one on the left. Water out of the high temp, indeed, indeed. Kellogg's, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. That is a pretty low profile power plant for one that needs a high temp turbine generator. And we'll do the input output like so. All right. So how much space does that take up? Oh, okay. <laughs> a little bit more than I was expecting. What's the big thing in the middle output? Big thing in the middle output. Big thing in the middle output. I don't understand the question. Bottom big engine looking thing. This? The high temp turbine generator? This is the uh This is the this is the big one that everything here is built around. Gives us a gigawatt of power. It takes in very hot steam, spits out water and less hot steam. Uh that's why we need the condenser turbines to take the less hot steam and turn that into water and uh yeah that's basically it we need five thousand degree steam to go into it in the first place should we try building a ship around this or should we try building a power plant around a ship I don't see how we're gonna... I don't see how we're gonna squeeze a high temp turbine generator into this one at all. What was our goal? 1500? 2k? Um, we wanted to make a fast ship that is attainable... Here we go. Attainable with Deep Space Science Pack 1, because that's what unlocks antimatter and everything else. Um, like, that's where you first pretty much made it. With, uh... With spaceships. Factory Spaceship 2. 3 is plus 500. 4 is plus 500. 5, 6... So minus 2,000 from our current limit. I'm pretty sure we're just trying to make a ship that's within 2,000. Below, below 2,000 uh, hull or container stress. I just see the arrows on top pointing out going to the undergrounds of the output of the steam engine. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, it spits out. So this is the input, five thousand degree steam. It spits out uh, water and also lower temperature steam, which the condenser turbines consume. All is as it should be.
and yeah, the lower tier condenses uh, condenser turbines spit out water. So the idea right now is just to make the fastest possible ship with no specific purpose, using only up to DSS-1 research, yes. And I think it's going to be significantly bigger than this. This is only 1100 though. Um, this was just an experiment to see like how... F like, I didn't expect... Uh, what are they called? Uh, fluid isothermic generators to be able to pull it off for a shield ship, but I was curious to see, well, not a very fast one. Our haulers pull it off quite well, actually, but they've only got four engines. Um, they only go 216 speed for quite a long time on the accumulators. But yeah, we want to go really fast. We, we want to go more or less as fast as possible in a ship that's below uh, below 2,000 hull stress. I, I feel a little bit sketchy about doing this with the engines because if you just do them up one way then the pipe connections are very convenient. But if you have one that's, like, in the middle here, then all of a sudden you need pipes down here and also some spaceship wall. Uh, and that looks super, super wrong. It doesn't look like it should work. It looks very weird. I don't like it. I guess we could make a diamond. A diamond probably makes a lot of sense, actually. So we can leave the each engine completely unobstructed. Have the maximum density of engines horizontally. Uh, and we should... Still have... Barely low... hull stress. So this will go here, right? How much is that? 2.5k? Ooh, 2.1. But we could probably move this up now, because we'll have way more space to do the engine down here. I could also potentially have the back of it this flat part and we could steal this design, uh, this part of the design again. The ship would have to be a little bit wider to get the same number of engines, uh, which might mean more shielding, but I mean we're probably not going to make very good use of this space sticking out of the back anyway, right? So what if we literally just steal this, for starters? And then... Use that power plant? Uh, we might want more engines though. How many engines did we use on the last version? Uh, it was only 12, but we kept it down to like 1100 hull stress. How many is this? 10? 11? 12. It's actually still thinner than... Wait, what? Wait, wait, what? I'm so confused. That's 12 engines, and that's 12 engines. Huh? Uh, 
Oh, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. No, this is ten. I miscounted. Okay, the world makes sense again. So we have to do this. Just to have as many engines as we did before. It's only slightly wider than it was before. So far. And I don't think we're going to have to have nearly as much up the front. I don't remember the numbers on high temp steam. Do we only need two high temp turbines to take all the heat from two by two antimatter reactors? No, uh, it's definitely not going to need that much heat. Um, I just like to get a bit more fuel efficiency. The world does not, in fact, make sense. Larius, welcome in. Well, it does if you're cynical enough. Okay. Um, I need this heat pipe. So this has got a, like, fuel-saving mechanism, whereby we wait for accumulator charge to drop at all, I think, or some amount. I don't know how much. Um, and, and once that happens, we swap out the old fuel and put in the new fuel. So there's a very brief, brief period where... Well, no, there's, there's not so much a brief period where this drops below 5,000 degrees where we can't make steam. Um, but the moment the accumulators drop low enough, uh, we put in more heat. And very, very quickly, this starts producing power again. If we don't have a range requirement, might as well just go for isothermics and a bunch of antimatter tanks. Well, the range requirement is we want it to be able to fly fast. At least for a few minutes, right? But no, I'd rather make it be able to fly fast, basically, indefinitely. Don't tell me after all of this, I may as well have just done the power plant that we've already figured out before. Kinda, yeah. Bruh. It's so much... It's so much more space efficient, um, by comparison. Okay, not that much more, but it, it, it really, it really is like... It's only what, like, uh, 40, 50% bigger for double the power capacity? We'll have a look at how much, uh, hull stress we've got left over. Like how much, uh, empty space bonus. Alright, so this can go here, and tentatively, I don't know, why don't we just steal this? It really doesn't need to be this big, though. This far forward. Are we gonna, like, steal this whole design? No, it's gonna need more shielding than that. But maybe... I'm pretty sure the shield layout is too small. for all of this. It is. So I would have to add more shields over this way. Well, we want to double the shields anyway, right? Well, let's just figure out a nice curve 
to begin with. And then maybe just double that. And then build some walls to accommodate what we've got. Does it really have to be that far forward? Okay, now we're getting into some territory where it's worth making the smaller power plant. Just a little bit. Flip that around. Oh, I like that. Actually, quite like that. We can tweak it a little bit. Maybe... Bring this down a bit further. That looks kind of weird now. It's not too bad. Okay, what kind of stats does this have? Thirteen hundred twenty-seven hull stress. It's a bit more than I was expecting. Actually, I'm, I I don't think it's ever counted what's on the outside, but let's just make sure. Also, I really don't. I don't know what happened here. Where did this asymmetry come from? Where indeed? Huh? What? What? How? Triple X Poser, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Okay, that's symmetrical. Why does this stick out? Actually. Are one of these engines not placed right? Is Is that what this is? Didn't I steal it from here? That should be right. Oh, these two aren't the same. Oh, this one's blocked. Okay. That took less time to find than I thought it would. Okay. Get out of here. And then... Put this here. Put this here. Put this here. It's not too bad. Maybe bring this back. And... Copy pasta flip. There we go. That's broadly what I'm looking for. I think we need a bit more shielding. Can we fit this pattern continuing? That should be okay. All right, two layers of shields. Yep. 
get rid of the spaceship floor. Do, 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 do. And calc. 1,353 hull stress. Uh, I assume it's getting the maximum empty tile bonus. 421 over 157. What does that mean? Well, it says minus 157. The most we can get is 10% uh, of the spaceship floor. So that's maxed out. Yeah. Oh, I think it means we've got like 300 more empty tiles than like we, we can we can fill this thing up way more with stuff and not lose anything in terms of empty empty space bonus. Verio, welcome in. Top left engine missing pipe, indeed. Almost teardrop shaped. Nope. Kurix, welcome in also. Um, so yeah, we could probably fit like a bunch of extra antimatter tanks if we want. Um, and we should have plenty of we should still be at 1353 hull stress. Cool. 369 out of 157. So we could fill like 150 tiles. And this will still be maximum uh, empty space bonus. We're paying uh, 12 megawatt for our engines. Which is honestly pretty trivial. Uh, it's very trivial compared to our one gigawatt. Uh, like, technically we get some more from the condenser turbines. But it's so little compared to the high temp that we don't even think about it. Um, uh, but yeah, we can... Uh, we can be raided by Benwu. Welcome in. How's your stream today? Thanks for the raid, Benwu. Hope you're doing well today. Yeah, this looks pretty good for a prototype. I don't know that we're going to get much better. Like, I could go a bit less hull stress and two fewer engines. This would be ten engines. If, if I get rid of these two, I have a feeling two more engines and like 1300 hull stress is probably faster though. And it's really not much more space. Doing well, stream was good, did some chill satisfactory, nice. I might play some more satisfactory at some point. Uh, I know it's had a few updates since... Uh, since I played it last. Where are we going to put the clamps? Are we lined up? We actually are. Nice. Very convenient. So that's obviously going to be how we refuel our antimatter. There's no way we can... Okay, technically, if we really wanted to, we could get the water in this way. But I think... Only trouble with this layout is we're going to need some pipe spaghetti to resupply water. Alternatively, uh, if we really wanted to, we could... Okay, maybe not there. Uh, we could add an electric boiler. No, it goes this way, doesn't it? Yeah. We could put, like, an electric boiler here to supply it with ice. 
Uh, which is going to give it a hell of a lot more range, by the way. So instead of, like, pumping water in from outside the ship, we just request ice. And then we just want to limit uh, water, ice. Uh, we just want to say if water is less than 20,000, because this is 25k. Right? Yes. We don't want it getting too full, because the output water could actually clog things up. Alright, and these are already set up. We need some accumulators. Put those there. Well, that one's in the way. Uh, I don't like the asymmetry there. Whatever. It's fine. It's not a whole lot of asymmetry. Not much more than this, anyway. Actually, couldn't I do this like that? That doesn't look much less asymmetrical, but I guess it's an improvement. Let's put these like back here. Okay, we need some power nice and close to the clamps. And all these green wires are connected. Uh, we need to read from an accumulator. That looks weird, with the wire. So if it drops below 95% full... We put more f uh, antimatter canisters in. This is one of those designs where we have to give it a pulse just once to input the first time. Uh, because the input ones only work when they detect output. And it's actually the output ones that are waiting for a condition from the accumulators. I guess I could put this up here. And yeah. I wish we could get something between regular laser turrets and laser artillery. You know, something like the uh, rocket turret or railgun turret in terms of range and speed. Laser turret just jumps straight to laser artillery. Storage? I mean, we can put that anywhere we want. We've got uh, loads of unused container stress, and we've got like 102 tiles that we could use for containers. Uh, but the purpose of this ship is just to see how fast we can go with relatively low hull stress. And, and it's all attainable by uh, Deep Space Science Pack 1. Let's give it a try. This looks pretty good to me. Okay. Uh, is this thing empty yet? Oh, wow. It really is. I, I didn't actually expect that. Fluid gets slower and slower as it gets closer to the target side being full and the other side being empty. So I wasn't really expecting... That to already be done. Um, is this in the way? It's only in the way of our temporary dock that we had to reset all of the...
uh, reset all of the hauler ships. Alright, let's blueprint. And... How much hull stress is it? 1356. Uh, speed ship. DSS-1. 1356 DSS-1. Speed ship. Let's see how it goes. Deep Space Science Pack 1. Uh, do we have a symbol to represent... Gotta go fast. How about a media? I don't know. Energy. Smile. This is not a place of honor. Uh, let's go with the media. Okay. Don't forget to include tiles. And toss that in the spaceship collection. Alright, we good to go here. Fantastic. Doesn't use as much floor as the last one, I think. Uh, gonna have to move that pipe a little bit, but no big deal. Distracting. What? Where is this connecting? Oh. There we go. Alright, what should we call it? The Jack Snipe? How about... I don't know. Oh, this is outside of the robot network. Uh, we can fix that. Probably just a small roboport is fine. Actually, how about... A supercharger over here. That might just reach. It does not. How dare you. There we go. Alright, so there's our water. Accumulators are still charging. We're going to need some heat once we've got the antimatter. There we go. Alright, let's take it for a spin. Forgot to put doors on it. Minor detail. I mean, we can just warp through the walls anyway, right? Yes, we can, with surprising ease.
Probably could have used a few... I could have used like a fiver pipe here, but who cares? Or underground pipe if I'm really desperate to get a few more empty tile spaces for hull stress. But it makes no difference at the moment. Speedy Consalis? Is that just a misspell, or does that mean something? Consalis name and meaning. Or is that how you spell it? Surnames evolved as a what? Yeah, you don't say. Huh. What's your previous top speed? Uh, well, the last one got well over 300 pretty easily, but the power couldn't keep up. Mistype? No worries. Alright, so we've got water. We've got enough ice to go 600 million units. Uh, antimatter's not that full yet, but we've got, like, ridiculous antimatter storage. Uh, if this does work. And we got heat. Oh, it's already... Oh, that's right. I think when we had, like, uh, two high-temp turbine generators, it took multiple inputs of the antimatter canisters to initially get it above 5,000 degrees. But evidently, um, just one quad insert is good enough for this one. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's set a destination. How about... Terribellus? What a name. Perhaps where, that's where we'll find the foundation. Terribellus Orbit? Launch. Engage. Judging by that smoke, we're already going pretty fast. 135, 150, 170, 200. Power is no problem whatsoever. Accumulator charge. I do want to see how much it dips when we hit a big rock. Because I don't want to react to big rock going into shield with burning more antimatter canisters. But I do want it to be very sensitive just beyond that. Okay, yeah, no, it's not it's not even close to dipping uh, dipping into the accumulator charge when we hit a big rock, it looks like. Keep an eye out for the next one. That one was not the smallest, but it only went up to, like, here. Oh, oh wow, that was scary. Wow. I'm actually surprised how quickly the shield that went completely off regenerates. I, I thought I remembered if the shield actually goes all the way down, it has a cooldown. Uh, but not so much. Uh, but yeah, even with that, we didn't really come even remotely close to using accumulator charge. So yeah, I think if we're... 5% down on accumulator charge, we can safely say it's time to put more fuel in. Should we take bets on how fast the ship gets? And whether it can go indefinitely? I don't know how fast we're going because I didn't click on it for a minute. Let's say... Prediction... Are we going faster than 300?
And it has to be 300 indefinitely, not 300, like, peak, very briefly. But I don't think that's going to happen with this ship. Uh, does our speedy ship go over 300? Okay. 48 characters in def. There we go. Place your bets while I grab a drink. I'm actually pretty happy how this power plant turned out. It's really not that bad for the symmetry. Considering where the I.O. is for these things. I think we did quite well. Alright, I guess I'll just let the prediction timer run out naturally before we click the boot on. How far have we gone? Ooh. That might be... Okay, timer's up. Where are we? We're already going past a Simeus. That's decent. And drumroll. 278. Damn. It's a little bit on the low end of my expectations, but not by much. All right. Prediction, the doubters have it. And most of, or most of the points at least, were doubters. We, we had five on each side. Does our speedy ship go over 300? Nope. Should we aim for 300? 278, I feel like, isn't worth the trouble, right? Like, our haulers do 216 and have a much, 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 much smaller footprint. Well, okay, not that much smaller. Uh, but they do have a much smaller footprint than this thing does. One would think we'd get more than, like, a 25% speed, uh, speed boost. Gotta feel better after losing bad. Zedius, welcome in. Uh, okay, what are we nuking? Here is a drop-off. Why not? Oops, wrong button. This one's for you. Fantastic. Alright. Should we just, like expand this design give it like twice as many engines i 
I think uh, once we get to a certain scale, we're really going to need like a giant V, right? Because if we keep expanding it this way, we're going to end up with more and more area. Uh, in in kind of like a exponential, you know, a, a floor space squared kind of pattern almost, as opposed to a closer to linear pattern of if we keep expanding it like this way, kind of like our victory ship. I bet if we literally just take the victory ship and strip out the Nexus, um... Okay, this is 3k hull stress, though. But it's probably pretty fast. Alright, let's turn this thing around. He can orbit... ETA 5 minutes. Cool, cool, cool. And we'll probably use like this power plant. Well, I don't know. Um, how? I think we can still get away with just one power plant, uh, like one gigawatt of power plant, if we like double the size of the ship. Because I mean, look at this. We're not even getting up to like a quarter. Okay, I lied. I, I think we just barely, just once, peaked at, like, more than 25% capacity of our power plant here. And that's when the, that's when the shields run into the biggest rocks and get collapsed, I think. So yeah, we can probably get away with the same power plant. Are we really just going to extend it up this way? How many more engines do you think we'd need to reach 300 with the same kind of design? Two more? Four more? Six more? Like, I, I, I know we're already pretty deep into diminishing returns. Okay, maybe not, maybe not that deep, because our haulers are only... 610 stress and this thing's double already if you moved two it'd be easy to do the math oh if I just like take two engines away from this thing like right now I guess I could literally just cut off the fuel supply to the engines and that'd be a pretty good approximation. Even though, you know, we could obviously have less hull stress. Um, if we didn't have these two engines over here. Are you going to run out? There we go. How are you still... Okay. No? Oh, I thought it consumed like 10 per thing. Okay, here we go. So we're down to 10 engines with 1,356 hull stress. X noon, welcome in. Uh, that actually cost us more than 20 speed. Hmm. That was a more dramatic change than I expected. Well, I guess we got rid of... one-sixth of our engines, right? Forty-six. So we should probably expect 232? No? If it was flat. Like, if each engine was giving us a certain amount of speed then we would expect to go down to 232 here, but I don't think that's happening. Looks like it's settling on about 247. Still, that is a bigger drop than I thought 
it would be. Yeah, so maybe literally just adding... Like, two more engines to this might even get us to 300. I have my doubts, but it's probably worth a try. Can we fit this here and get away with the same shields? Probably not. If a really big rock hit right here, uh, it would probably AoE through and hit the engine. But I feel like trying it just as an experiment without too much effort to see how fast it would go. Um, let's do a clamp thingy over here. Oh, we already said 376. Actually, wait. If we're going to add an engine here, then we definitely don't want to clamp in the same spot. Okay. So it's going to be something like... Like this. That looks super sketchy. That looks so sketchy. Maybe it would be worth doing engines in like... Nah, I don't want to block them. It's fine, lol, just for a speed test. Which end of SEK2 do you want to go for? Which end? Oh, which victory condition? We already did the ship and the... Uh, we also did the uh, intergalactic transceiver. Satan, welcome in. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. I should just bring antimatter engines. What's up, ETA-122? So this goes here. Are you planning to do the super secret ending at some point? Uh, I don't know. Do you mean the one that involves the 600 million attempts guess and check? Not as excited about that one. What's how ET they get home? 52 seconds. Um, I should probably move this. Well, that's slower to move than I thought it would be. That's probably fine. Why are they hovering? Because they belong to the train, which is overfilled. Okay. I actually thought it would be time to anchor. Yes, that one, but you can also write a Python script to figure it out for you. I don't feel like writing a Python script. Also, I mean, what even... It's so obscure, like, it's so... There aren't even hints, it's just... It's like playing Fear and Hunger or something. Just banging your head against a wall until something works. 
Okay. So we should have room to do this here. Uh, can I just grab that? Get rid of this. I need a bit more floor. And that goes there. What's the objective of the super secret one? Uh, it's like spam calling the intergalactic phone until someone picks up. That's not a biter. Which, well, it's, it's more like a teleporter or something, I guess. We've already got the intergalactic transceiver. Here come the bots. And... That goes there. What? Not again. Uh, this goes here, doesn't it? Okay. So this was how fast? 278? Before we added two engines that are probably not protected by the shields. Alright. Let's go to Merlime. We still have our antimatter and water. Cool, cool, cool. 60%? Oh, no. I'm surprised we get 60% efficiency by from these engines that are completely blocked here. Well, at least the center tile at the output is completely blocked. Lambeau. Uh, no, don't engage. Go back to Hagen Orbit. Inua, welcome in. And Midden. Good to see you all here today. What is it doing? Okay. Uh, so I need even more spaceship floor. Right about here. And this needs to go here. And I was actually right the first time with the one on the left. And we need just a little bit more floor over here. I pity there aren't some side connections for the antimatter engines. Okay. Same, same over this way. Wait, what? And I'm pretty sure that's symmetrical. Yes, very important. Okay, 1,412 hull stress now. But we added two engines. Should probably add more of them down here. If we're really that close to 300. Midas? That's not what I meant. Merlime. Sounds like something from Lord of the Rings. Couldn't you move the bottom shields one out? Uh, probably. This is just me slapping a couple more engines on just to see what difference it makes. 
So our last one was 278. Top speed. That was with 1300 something hull stress. And 12 engines. And this is 14 to 1400. 270, 273, 278. To say we're blasting past our last speed would be an exaggeration. I don't know if we're going to reach 300. It's going to be a little bit close. Why are you getting 90 something percent on bottom engines? 90 something percent on bottom engines? I did not notice this. Don't they usually say, like, 99% after the first engine? Ooh, I think we're going to do it. 299, 299.5, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7, I think we're, I think this is over 300. Fantastic. Heyo, Owen, welcome in. All right. So, that is a 300 speed ship, uh, well below 2,000 hull stress. And if I want to make a slightly prettier final version of it, I would probably continue the diamond all the way to the back. I think now you use more shield, more maze, more speed. Um, my only concern, if I don't, like, put more shields or move them around a bit, is if a really big rock hits right here, uh, it might get through. But so far, it looks pretty good. What's the plan for today? What are we doing now? Uh, just more, wow. More refactoring and taking a break from that sometimes to mess around with spaceships. Just do some fun sandboxy stuff. Jeez. So with only two layers of shield and these rocks existing, uh, I'm pretty sure... It's kind of like the probability thing of stopping meteors, right? Um, if you have like 16 media defenses, the global ones, it's very, very, very unlikely for meteors to get through, but they can. And it's... Ooh. Um, and it's kind of the same thing with the big rocks, because randomly two big rocks can spawn very close together, I think. It's just really uncommon. But if you have this thing flying around indefinitely, or copies of it flying around indefinitely, it's going to happen eventually. So as long as, you've, as long as you've got rocks that can one-shot shields, uh, I would think three layers of shield is probably the minimum safe spread. I don't know how I would fit that here. I mean, we can mostly fit it, but what about the middle one? Are there lasers to shoot them? I mean, we could, but they'd mostly just shoot down the small rocks so that the shields don't have to spend energy on the small rocks. They're never going to shoot down the big ones in time, though. If only laser artillery could be uh, persuaded to only shoot the biggest rocks, then you could get just a lot of value out of those. Oh, the engine's actually cut out for a second there. Really? Why did they? Look at that spike. I think it was probably 
Like, it takes time to empty the accumulators, even if they're being drained at maximum speed. Uh, I think it was probably that the shields get hyper-prioritized, uh, and it just had such a big spike of power consumption going to the shields that it ignored the engines. So yeah, you would you would actually want like two high temp turbine generators to cover that contingency. I'm pretty sure no matter how much power you pour into them, the ones that go down are still gonna like stay down for like a second or something. Half a second or so. If you kept the engine layout and make the nose bigger, you'd have room for a third shield. Uh, yeah, probably. This basically seems to work, though. Hello? What is this ship made for? Just speed. Speed and being relatively small, that's all. Kariyama, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. What other arbitrary limitations or challenges could we set for ourselves with ship design? I mean, there's always... How small could we make a fast antimatter ship? Like, like really, really small, not just below what you can get with Deep Space Science Pack 1s. Like, what if we have one or two antimatter engines? Um, the smallest one I can think of... would have two of these next to each other. Probably. And we're going to have some fluid isothermics. And I guess you'd have to go for lasers for defenses, because shields are going to be too thirsty. But if it goes above a certain speed, we're probably in trouble. Oh, uh, that's the wrong... Maybe something like this. So that's 2468 megawatt. Um, I wouldn't mind having a shield if it's as a last resort, so we put the lasers in front of it, but where would we even fit it if we're going for the smallest footprint we can get? Like, this so far is... How much? One hundred and eighty-one hull stress. Maybe we make it a little bit wider, like kind of like that. Let's see how we're gonna fit. That doesn't. That is not cozy. What? What about like that? This is getting away from the the idea of a really, really small ship already. But uh, that is approximately less than three hundred hull stress. Okay. But yeah, if we wanted to have like the shield is a last resort. That's already too wide. If it's only one shield. Shields only cost only cost one megawatt to keep up. It's just that they consume all the power when they get hit. I think we'd have to go for lasers for a small one. Uh, the lasers are capable of consuming four megawatt. So two fluid isothermics individually when they are consumed, uh, when they're firing. So this is probably no good at speed. Also, I forgot that uh, Naquium accumulators 
I mean, you could probably do this with Holmium Accumulators. The Accumulators are full all the time. It's basically just... There as a measure of, do we need to put more heat uh, into the reactor? How about gun turrets with an inserter? Would greatly reduce the power. This is true, this is true. Gun turrets actually have pretty crazy DPS. Uh, especially with the late game. Uh, research. We've actually got one right here that uses gun turrets. And Immersite Rifle Mags. Are those the best ones? I think they are, for the gun turrets. Oh, uh, we also have some... I think all the higher tech gun turrets... You can't put flamethrower turrets on a ship. I, I think all the higher tech ones um, are quite big. So, can't just casually put those on a small ship. You are allowed to put them on the ship, though. Yes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the slow firing stuff, uh, it doesn't prioritize the big rocks or anything. Hmm. I think it would have to be gun turrets. Of course, that means adding uh, containers, which gives us a bunch of container stress. Uh, where, where, where for art gun turrets? Here we go. You can like have long arm inserters supply the gun turrets. But, like, you're not getting that far on on just, like, a stack per gun turret. Also, the inserters won't put in more than a stack. Uh, I did manage to, like, trick the system here into placing more uranium rifle mags uh, into these gun turrets. But the way that was done was basically, when the ship takes off, the inserter tries to place ammo here. And then when the ship lands, it actually gets put in the ship, uh, in the gun turret. The interesting challenge would be a ship only defended by laser artillery turrets. I think we did that. Uh, well, not quite, this one. It does have laser artillery turrets. The point of it is to land and kill biters. That's why there's shields at the back. Uh, but yeah. I guess we could try and make one with just laser artillery. Honestly, I think it'd have to be... ...kinda slow. These things consume 150 megawatt passively. Uh, no, it's 50 megawatt passively. So like 20 of these... ...consumes an entire high temp turbine generator. Uh, by itself. Firing continuously, we can support six laser artillery turrets per high temp turbine generator. If we suppose that that other 10% is enough for the engines. And I think I would just not bother with the shields. Because... We'd have to go all in, right? <laughs> Laser turrets only. I mean, that was the challenge, right? Do the K... Uh, Crestorio 2 loaders work in space? Loaders? As in... Uh, as, as in these? These things? Yes? Those suck a lot of power, they really do. So if we did, like... If we used our... Late game construction ship... Layout... With 2 gigawatt... Strip away all the laser turrets... And shields... We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 megawatt, which is like nothing. Uh... 
We've got a budget of about 1900 or 1990 megawatt for laser artillery. Um, which would support 13 laser artillery turrets. Do you suppose that'd be enough? We could try it. I think I'd just, uh, just to play with this idea quick and dirty, let's just make a copy of the construction ship. And... Where is our ship, by the way? Where are we going? Oh, we still have for Merlime. Oh, wow. We're halfway there. Not bad. Not bad at all. 11 minutes to go. So how how long does this thing take to get to Foenestra from anywhere? 37 seconds? Or was that already just a random number? I don't think it was 37 seconds. Because it takes our like 220-ish speed ships. Uh, I think it's at least three and a half minutes or something. To get to Foenestra. I was hoping to catch an outbound one. We're already... I was going to say a fifth of the way there. We are now a quarter of the way to Foenestra. Which is one-eighth almost, of a journey to anywhere. That's pretty decent, especially considering the game is running at a half to two-thirds speed. Is Veldak here? Veldak played around a lot with trying to make fast ships. Made some monstrosities, and they only went, like... I don't think any of them went 400. Right? Not operable. How dare you. Do the loaders allow you to insert 200 ammo in a gun turret? Don't they? I never tried that. Good question. Do we have a gun turret here? We do. And a requester. And ammo. Of some kind. Uh, magazine. I don't know if we have magazines. To be honest. Lying around. Uh, we should have them upstairs, right? We should have some rifle mags lying around. Cool. Question is, do we have gun turret lying around? Surprisingly, yes. Okay, request. If I shift right, shift left, that doesn't do anything. Uh, don't care what kind, just as long as we have it. And space loader. So it does. I didn't know that. That's a bit handy. Wait, can it actually... It can't take it out of the gun turret, right? Uh, let me just do it like this. Wait, it did take it out. No way. What? I... I'm pretty sure it just took ammo out of the gun turret. 
inserters don't do that. I mean, they do, but they... Actually, hold on. It's been so long. Will an inserter empty this one to feed this one? Is what I'm wondering. Um, I guess they do. It's been so long since I played, like, low-level Death World stuff. Oh, could you, could, could you not? There we go. Okay, so gun turret has 28. Uh, this only takes 12. But we'll make this empty up. It does empty it. Huh. They do remove the ammo. Yeah. So the only difference is loaders will remove... Uh, loaders will completely saturate the input, and inserters won't. So I guess... Uh, if we're satisfied with short-range trips... That helps us for the design of our very small ship. If we're really going for very small ship, I think two engines is probably... It, it, especially if we're going to do gun turrets. Um, I think we can go really, really small here. So that's our whole power plant... Uh, maybe we can just squeeze the gun turrets in here. But I... We don't quite have room... We're like one tile off having room to... Get input of ammo from outside the ship. Unless we were going to use inserters, but again, inserters won't put much in. Um, the other question I have, though, is what if we add, like, four chests, or even just two? Hull stress with this little square is only 150. And container stress is now 73. It does bump up the hull stress because we're not, uh, we don't have the empty tile bonus maxed out. Hmm. We're not streamliner either though, are we? So we probably want to at least do this. Well, how much streamline is that? Only 19%. Okay. So, kind of like that. It's only 33 per... Oh, I think... Uh, I think this might be messing up the streamline. It was. That's still not 100% though. So I guess we need to go up here. 90%. 100%. Okay, how much empty space do we have? We're at 157. Empty tiles bonus is maxed out. Okay. Which means... 157.2. Yeah, uh, whoops. 157.2. Yeah, the containers are free, basically. So what if we put them here? And some space loaders. Uh, and I'm realizing we can't put it in from here to here. 
And we don't have room for this. Hmm. All stress 164. Don't like it. But wait. Uh, what if... No... It's actually pretty challenging making the tightest ship possible. Well, I guess tightest with antimatter engines. It'd be a little bit easier uh, with rockets. But I want to make this as fast as possible for a tiny little ship. Don't need a belt between the loaders? What do you mean? Oh yeah, no you don't. But you do need two loaders. Um, are we back yet? We are back yet. No, that's Foenestra. Hagen Orbit, please. Hmm. There isn't a smaller... I mean, I, I guess we could do just one fluid isothermic. It's not going to be symmetrical, and that makes me sad. But... It's probably a bit sketchy that the gun turrets are this far back. But maybe it can manage... Can, can we really manage with only two gun turrets, even if they've got, like, top-tier ammo? I'm a bit skeptical. I'd also just rather if this was symmetrical. That goes there. Okay, now we're talking. And... That would have to be forward by one tile. Right? Something like that. What kind of streamline have we got? 90%? Yuck. Which means this would have to go here. 100%. Okay. Is there a smaller power plant? I don't think so. There's a wind turbine. I don't think we can put those on spaceship floor. Um, steam engine is the same size, even if it wasn't uh, needing steam. Gas power station is bigger, but weirdly enough, you can, in this version at least, you can use it this way, uh, and it is more efficient, but we're not going to be doing that. High temp, nuclear, antimatter, fusion. Yeah, no, this is pretty much the only option for being this small. Uh, unless we want to use a burner turbine generator. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I think we're doing this. Um, 85% efficiency, 2 megawatt. Uh, except wouldn't we need, like, some containers to keep it going for a while? <laughs> What's the most efficient fuel, stack-wise, that we can put in? There's actually so many things that you can burn as fuel, but most of them are 
absolute garbage. If I recall correctly, I ended up figuring out Vulcanite blocks, actually. You can put all this stuff in trains. And I was thinking about resupplying the trains at the outposts with something that doesn't occasionally spit out broken batteries. Um, but the power density of the batteries is just insane compared to any completely consumed fuel, so it didn't end up going with that. Vulcanite's good bet since it stacks to 200, yeah. Uh, Vulcanite is... Vulcanite block, that is. Not the raw Vulcanite. Vulcanite block... 30 megajoules times 200 is 6k. What was the charged space train power pack? 20 times 100 is 2,000, right? Except it's times 3, because you transport them without them being charged. So it's actually... Well, this doesn't give us a fuel value. So you transport them as this, because arbitrarily the stack size is 3 times as big. Uh, and then... When these are charged, you get uh, 100 megajoules times 20 is 2,000, but you can actually transport three times as much. So you could argue that you get the same energy per stack from Vulcanite block as Space Train Power Packs, except, of course, that on site, you're going to be recycling the Space Train Power Packs 100 times on average, before they break. Uh, so it's actually like... 600,000. 600,000... Uh, so it's literally a hundred times better if you ignore the fact that you have to take destroyed space train power packs and do something with them. But we can't put space train power packs into burner turbine generators, for example. Okay, how quickly... First of all, can I put four stacks without using a chest of vulcanite block into this thing? I imagine yes. Yeah, I, I don't know if inserters will fill it up properly, but this does. Uh, and then the next question is, if our ship is flying as fast as possible, how long does four stacks of Vulcanite block last us? So it's 6,000 megajoules? Yeah. Six gigajoules per stack times four. Twenty-four thousand, uh, and this consumes. I guess the only power consumption is the engines. The co the spaceship console consumes consumes a trivial amount as well, but we could just pretend it's just the engines. Uh, I'm going to round this down to one megawatt each, so two thousand per second. Um. 12 whole seconds. Is that right? Ignoring the efficiency here. That can't be right. Because this can spit out... If this gives us 2 megawatt, and I'm pretty sure we're not burning... I'm pretty sure we can't burn 800 blocks of Vulcanite in 12 seconds. Where did I go wrong? It's divided by 2, not 2,000. Uh, okay. So it's a 1,000 times. It's 12,000 seconds, is that it? 
welcome in guy clicking. How much does the console consume? I think it's literally like one one jewel or something. Um, oh, oh, we crashed. That's not great. Well, I guess we're limping home. 20, 20 seconds away? Really? This is where you crashed? Really? <laughs> Come on. Okay, anyway. Uh, the spaceship console is consuming... It says zero watt. Yeah, if it's not zero, it's practically zero. It just has to have power to function. Vulcanite in a burner generator on a ship with 300 speed. Not something you see every day. Indeed, indeed. Um. Yeah, maybe we will power it this way. Which means we can make the ship a bit smaller. Not that much smaller. In fact, it's literally just one tile less long. I wish I could fit gun turret here and have it fed by one of these, but I don't see how. Unless... What if... This goes here. This goes here, and this goes here, and on this side, kind of like that. Obviously, Symmetria is crying, but not too hard. I'm sure we can fit a chest or two, though. Oh, okay. Hull stress is all the way down to 157. That's pretty cool. Uh, we've only got 19 out of 20.6 uh, empty tile discount. So the belts are cost, uh, costing us hull stress. Hmm. Lutonite, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Does a belt cost the same as a chest? I imagine it does. Yeah. A chest costs just as much as a belt for hull stress, not container stress. So therefore, we should use requested chests over here. I could put them up here. Looks cozier. One fifty five point four. I can probably live with that. And since we're still way below oh we're not way way below. Oops. Um but since we're still basically way below with the container stress. Yeah, we could do that instead. So we've got copious uh Copious fuel storage here. Okay, is this it? If I put doors or clamps... Of course this is all placed perfectly wrong. Uh, if I put doors or clamps... I'm pretty sure it's going to cost us just a little bit of hull stress. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the uh, doors and clamps where walls would be cost the same, because it's simply 
not giving us the discount from the walls. 162 versus 155. That is actually significant. I think we'll just manually land it and stuff. Uh, and a door takes us from minus 30 from spaceship walls to minus 29. Oh, minus 29.25. Okay, then. Sure. Could put burner and console beside each other? How would I get the input for the burner? Huh. We'd, we'd, we'd need to redesign the front of it. But yes, that seems good. Um, like this? Okay. What kind of stress is this? We went from 156 to 160, but I added a lot of turrets. But we could probably just make it smaller. How many turrets did we have? Five. This is actually only two more. What if... What if we do it something like this? And then all of these walls can go back by two. How's that? We're not going to get as much empty space bonus. Or just about any. Empty tiles, minus 10, out of a possible 18.6. But we're down to 149.7. Uh, and I don't have... There we go. Alright, we could probably also put it here. That's a bit less visually cluttered. Okay. Vulcanite... I can't remember, is solid rocket fuel the same density? 100 megajoules times 10, 1,000. This is 2,000. 200 times 30. No, it's 6,000. So that's way better than solid rocket fuel. What other options are there? As I recall, processed fuel is about the same as solid rocket fuel, or exactly the same. Uh, and I don't think it gets better with, like, advanced fuel or anything. Advanced fuel is... 200 times 30... 100 times 15. Well, that's a quarter, isn't it? Both of these are 50%. The only bonus is uh, Vulcanite blocks don't give vehicle acceleration. Yeah, so it's going to be Vulcanite blocks. Alright. So, hull stress, 151.75. And container stress is below that, so it doesn't matter. Oh dear, those inserters do use 120 kil... Oh, right. My bad.
Minimum consumption, 400 watt, as opposed to 1 kilowatt. And maximum is 13.6, as opposed to 120. But it's not just like 9 times more power, because the longer inserters don't have to swing for as long. Um, also, if we somehow did it with loaders instead... Like, no inserters at all. We would have no passive power drain except for the antimatter engines. But they're already 66.66 kilowatts. So the inserters aren't really super relevant. Are we streamlined if I remove this? I don't think so. No, we're not. Okay. And I think that's about it. Assuming we have enough DACA. That is probably about as small... We're going to get for kind of a fast ship. Uh, let's give it some ammo. Immersite rifle mags. If we don't have them, we're going to make them. Because we do not want to be messing around with... Oh, are these the same stats? They are the same stats. No? No, not quite. 14 plus 50.4, 14 plus 50.4. Oh, Imsight Rifle Mags add 10 plus 36 laser damage, as opposed to some radioactive damage. I don't think the rocks care about radiation. They're already in space. Also, this is a larger number. 10 plus 36 versus 6 plus 21.6. Okay, yeah. So we want to use Immersight. Uh, I think it's 9.6k. Is what we can fit in one chest. Did I just... No. Did not just request it in the wrong place. Uh, I could, of course, just have one chest and feed all of these from that, but I think, uh, I think I'd rather have plenty of ammo. Out of curiosity, what's Vita like for fuel? Uh, so we can use Vitam Lunge, Nugget, Bloom, Spice, Extract for fuel. Uh, everything short of, like, reagent all the way through the production chain. There's... Oh, let me just search Vita. Some pretty bad numbers on these. Uh, let's see. 20 times 2 megajoules. So 40 megajoules per stack, uh, as opposed to 6,000. 50 times 1, slightly better. Uh, 50 times 2.2, .2, so we're at 104 megajoules per stack with Bloom. 50 times 4.5. 225 megajoules per stack for Spice. And 200 times 10. A third, if we want to waste our time making extract as fuel, uh, it's a third as good as vulcanite blocks. Which is not as bad as I expected, but still, there's, there's no way you'd ever do this. I'm pretty sure we have to spend vulcanite blocks somewhere in the process of making vitamelange, right? No? Was it my imagination? Or maybe it was, like, further down the chain. Yeah, here it is. To make reagent, you spend vulcanite blocks. But you're not spending vulca vulcanite blocks on Vidamelange before that step. But you certainly need it to make use of the Vita. Huh. 
How has our Vittum lunge been going? I see empty belt. I guess we shifted the bottleneck. So there's probably no extract at any of these stations right now. This one's filling up. Okay, it's a slight exaggeration to say no extract, but there was only one station with a train load available. And these were super saturated earlier for a long time. Uh, so yeah, we shifted the bottleneck. I don't know how much of this is... Uh, what the f... Uh, how did that happen? I don't know how much of this is catching up, because we didn't have such a copious storage of epoxy before. Um, judging by the fact that the epoxies aren't empty, I don't think we actually need anywhere near this much overall. And we're on, we're on rocket reusability 17 now. Nice. Okay, uh, what were we doing? Let's drain this ship. We, we've got like a copy of it over here, right? If we want to use this as a template to make a even faster ship. Might do that later on. And let's get this ice back where it belongs. The rest we can just decon at our leisure. We'll just decon all once the uh, antimatter is empty. Okay. So shall we make this monstrosity? Oh, we need to set up Immersite Rifle Mag production somewhere, because I don't think we have that anywhere. Immersite Rifle Magazine. Uh, we actually do have it here. Are we mass... Are, are we, like, automatically producing it, or is this just leftovers? 2.3k. 90. Oh, we did produce it for this ship already. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. No shortage of that. Alright, so let's make the silliest question mark? One of the silliest ships that we've made. Uh, and matter mini daca boat nice and where are we gonna put it How about over here for now Aziz light, Aziz light. ragamuffin welcome in hope you're doing well Good to see you again. Oh, it doesn't have a power pole. We can sort that out. No, pr that's the wrong one. No problem whatsoever. Did I make a blueprint somewhere that has like nice grid snapped add-on power poles. Whatever, we only need two. We just need it to touch spaceship co- oh. I lied. We need it to touch these inserters as well. Oh no. I 
I guess that'll do. Power Sun, welcome in. Uh, we need a burner turbine generator. I'm not sure why there's not an antimatter booster being placed here, though. We don't have any. Huh. That's a little bit surprising. I guess it's not that surprising. Because... Because I stopped making them at some point. Okay, that is surprising. Um... But yeah, I was going to say, there's probably just a small target to make these. And then we made a bunch of them in a ship all at once. I'm actually quite surprised we didn't run into that limit sooner. Uh, but yeah, we need a burner, burner turbine generator, just as a one-off. We've got some downstairs, but I'm not going to go to the trouble of getting them. There we go. And done. Oh, we, we made three by accident. Construction train is being silly again. Uh, do we have our booster tank coming in? Booster... was it regular booster tank? Spaceship rocket booster tank is a prereq. Is that in here? It should be. I'm pretty sure it's a prereq for ion engine as well. Yeah, here it is. No, that's the engine. How do you make... Ion booster tank? That wants a storage tank. I don't... Th I think we actually made this in the autocrafter before. So I guess I'll put this here. And we'll have to whitelist it. Okay, so that should be making these automatically. Once the inserter catches up, that is. And of course, it's going to overfill things that we've already got too much of. No! <laughs> oh, the recipe changed. There we go. Alright. Booster tank should be on the way. Oh, it's already here. Sneaky! Why is there V... Uh, oh. 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 Apparently we don't have that much, uh... Vulcanite block here. I would only be mildly surprised if we were already requesting it. Uh, so where am I going to grab Vulcanite block from? Move it... Over here. Cool. Vulcanite block. Uh, this one. Wait for full cargo. Come back to mall. If this thing's going to work, I don't want to have to stop because we're out of fuel. Oh, and we did put the... We did put the extract in there. Whatever, it's fine. Alright, uh, so I guess... Is this already full of ammo? No, it's not. Um... 
Do we still have ammo automated? Signal. Uh, we do not. So let's add a request for it somewhere. There's our military stuff. That'll do. MSI rifle mag. Uh, whatever. Make it a chest full. What does it actually take to make these? Just Imosite Crystal and Rifle Mag. Uh, we've only got like two Rifle Mag here. Where were we making them before? It must have been outside of the mall. Or like outside of the autocraft. Um, what does it take to make regular mag? Whole iron copper. Yeah, that should be fine. Assuming we've got coal being requested here, we do. Cool, cool, cool. And then it needs to request mag. Where am I going to whitelist it? This will do. Okay. So that just already converted all of our regular rifle mags to imosite, I think. No? Do we not request imosite crystal here? We do not. Okay, let's put the crystals together. Did I put these as negatives? For the whitelist? Uh, where was I adding it? Here. Yeah, I did. What was the other thing that I added recently? I guess I could just mouse over this looking for negatives. Mags. Yeah, no, I think... Oh, it was the spaceship booster tanks. The rocket booster tanks. Uh... Rocket booster... Negative 10. Okay, cool. All right, so there's our imosite mags getting made. Kind of bottlenecked on the bots because I didn't request very much imosite crystal. Maybe I'm a, being a little bit too conservative. Uh, then again, so for most of these resources, I only allow a stack. And the container's half full, so. How does this setup work? The autocrafter? Uh, so basically we've got crafting combinator mod. You can point this little blue constant combinator looking thing at a machine and feed it a signal and it'll set a recipe um, for that machine. Currently I've got it set up so that it only refreshes like every 33 seconds or something. But once that kicks in you'll see it just change the recipe. After that, it's a matter of reading what we've got in the robot network, multiplying that by negative one, uh, having a bunch of positive numbers for things we do want it to make, mashing those together with the implicit addition and subtraction that Factorio Combinators do, and then we feed it into a series like this. Do we have medium power poles? Probably not. We do. Okay. 
Uh, so all we're doing here is we've got a bunch of different signals. We use the anything uh, condition. Output anything is just going to pick the first uh, signal that meets that condition and spit out nothing else. So it's outputting fish. Uh, and then we take that, multiply fish by negative one, and then feed it to the whole list. Uh, so this is outputting fish times negative one. This is outputting our original list. Mash those together and we've got the list minus fish. Uh, and then we just rinse repeat. Uh, this thing is just times one. It's just... A, the, there's only two reasons this is here and it's got nothing to do with calculation. Uh, it is a one-way piece of wire, and it's so that the signal timing will be the same. Uh, I guess the signal timing is not the same, actually. Going through here. Yeah, it's just a one-way piece of wire. The times one over here. Otherwise, you get some weird stuff happening. Uh, so yeah, apply that to like this circle arrangement we've got. Uh, it's a little bit hard to follow with the way I've crammed them in here, but every everywhere you see those three combinators, uh, that's what's going on. Clear as mud. Welcome in Ownbeat. Did we finish building this? I think so. And it's full of Vulcanite, and it's not full of ammo yet. Okay. Did we finish emptying this? More or less. I think we'll give it a bit more time. Okay. I might take a little break while we wait for this to fill up with ammo. Um, and then we'll see how it goes. Big thanks? No worries, you're welcome. Always happy to try to teach this stuff. Oops. Alright. Into our cramped little ship we go. And we'll see how it goes after the break. Upgrade name in base to gold. X new. Sure thing. Is it downstairs or upstairs? Or did you just drop both? No. X noon. Oh, there it is. Fantastic. Beautiful. What is the long chain of combinators for in the autocrafter? Didn't quite get it. Okay. Uh, so it's basically just a signal separator repeated over and over again. We have a bunch of sample inputs, different signal types. If we use uh, anything, greater than zero output anything, or you could have whatever condition you want up here. The point is, if you use the anything output, it will take the first signal that meets the condition and output that. So kind of like each, except it'll just spit out the first thing it gets instead of every different signal that meets the condition. So once we've got that, we want to subtract one fish from our list. That's the negative one over here. Uh, and then we have negative one fish and the original list both go to these two inputs. Uh, and then we basically just repeat the process. Uh, and it's really just these two over and over again. Except the each times one output each combinator down here is just there so that we have like a one-way piece of wire. Uh, it's not actually because we need to do any calculations. Uh, so really, really what we're needing to repeat each time is just this. Pick one signal, multiply it by negative one, uh, and add it to the entirety of the list. Uh, so then at this point, the entirety of the list is already minus one fish. And then it's minus one wood as well. 
Factorio circuits are a genre of programming next to OOP functional and procedural? Object oriented? It clears one signal off the line. Yes, exactly. Okay, uh, let's take a little break. And then when we come back, we'll test the mini anti matter DACA boat and see how fast it gets, see if it survives, uh, and see if it has enough power. I'm pretty sure it does. Wait. Oh, no. We already know the answer. It actually doesn't have enough power. It's going to be slightly short. It's going to be slightly power bottlenecked because this is 1.03 megawatt each and this thing outputs 2 megawatt. Oh well, let's see how it performs anyway. How fast do you think it'll be and will it, uh, will it keep the asteroids away? All right, let's do some words on stream. You can remove one inserter. Uh, technically correct, but I don't want to. Oh, also, I'm realizing this probably doesn't need to be a superior inserter. Do we have a bot for that? Yeah, here it comes. Are you considering that one feature of game could be paradigms? Wait, what? Current supply will be skewed? Yeah, exactly. If I remove the the one arguably unnecessary inserter. Okay. Welcome in Kimmy and Mage uh Majoness. Alright, let's do some words on stream. Uh, apparently here is not one I prepared earlier, but it's not being slow today. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
nicely done. Let's continue, shall we? Should be about time that we can give this thing a proper test. We've got over 4,000 rounds of ammo. I'm sure we can, uh, I'm sure we can go far enough with this thing to see how functional it is. All right, let's aim for a Simeus. A Simeus orbit, please. Launch disabled. Uh, it would probably help if I gave it antimatter fuel. That might be a good idea. That's something that I could have done in all of this time that we had. Oops. Seventeen tiles. Or sixteen. Uh, we could do two fives and a seven. And are we already pumping this way? Not really. Uh, how about a three? Over here. Oops. Oh, that works. Who needs antimatter? Uh, we do. We do. Rip didn't do 9 plus 7. Oh, well. Extremely insignificant? Okay, then. I mean, it ended up being 13, so... Oh, sorry. 12... 15. Damn it! We will fix this immediately. There we go. Are we happy? And can we empty this yet? 2.2k? Why are you like this? Alright, let's just start removing these in order. Guy clicking. Uh, I was going to say welcome in. Are we happy, Vincent? Indeed. Uh, I, I don't need to be this stingy about antimatter at this point, but whatever. We're waiting for our ship to fill up regardless. So if you don't know what I'm doing here, um, as long as there's room, fluid gets forced into the nearest container. Doesn't get wasted. And we can't really get rid of that there. But that should speed up the pumping process a bit. Or not? Why is it so slow? 21 per second. This side's empty and this side's like 25% full. That's weird. I guess I'll just leave that there for a while. The tanks in the middle will wildly slow it down. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't want to remove that ship or anything. Uh, wow, that filled up faster than I thought it would. Okay. We're ready. Let's go. Integrity check. Launch. Don't kidnap the bot. God damn it. I guess he... This logy bot just adopted me. Also... The power pole doesn't have any power. Uh, power pole. The, uh, the long-handed inserter over here doesn't have any power. No, don't. Go back to Hagen Orbit. There we go. 
we need just one more of these, unfortunately. All right. So now we've actually got fuel. We already had some fuel in here, didn't we? So why wasn't it... Well, let's see. Don't anchor again. Uh, go to Asimius. Engage. What's the problem? Apparently this power pole doesn't touch the generator. Do you have to? I can't make it touch both of them? Really? Okay, what about... What about this? Okay, that just barely works. There we go. Looks like the gun turrets are just barely shooting down some of the rocks already, but we're at 213 speed. Is this as fast as we go? Not even. 232, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 240. I think we're gonna get hit. Yeah. I'm pretty confident we're gonna get hit. I don't think this is enough gun turret because of the way they go back. Uh, because of the way they keep opening and closing after every encounter. That's the only reason they're too slow. If, if they were ready all the time to fire, I think it'd be okay. Uh, so we're at 252 speed now. And there it goes. Evil Pla, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Hysterian, welcome in also. So how fast do you suppose this could go without crashing? Two hundred, perhaps? Uh, Kale, welcome in. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. I tried a mod, uh, making a mod for the laser turrets that got rid of their idle wind-up animation. Never got it to be nice. Unfortunate. I think I'd be okay with it if they just waited 10 seconds to wind down or something. That'd be so much better. It looks like it can handle 200 pretty easily. got hit. You take it back. Drastically increase their range. Hmm. Increase their wake-up range, but not their physical range. Is I, I would be surprised if that's possible with a mod. Typically, what you can do with mods is tweak variables, for example. And depending on what you're working with, you may or may not be able to change the, like, fundamental behavior of it. We are already, like, a fifth of the way to a Simeus, almost. Uh, but yeah, this one, not too surprisingly, didn't work out so, so well. It went faster than I thought it would, um, with just the two antimatter engines. So I guess we could make, uh, like a one shield version of this with, uh, fluid isothermics. If we're okay with it, oops, 
if we're okay with it slowing down when the shield takes enough of a beating, that's probably fine. Because at this hull stress and speed, I don't think we're ever going to see bigger rocks. Uh, not big enough to make a shield actually go down. It's just going to drain a lot of energy um, to recharge the shield. Upping the wake-up range might do it, indeed. True worms wake up, but don't start attacking. True. Don't know how far away meteors spawn, though. Uh, you, I think you can see it on the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. You can see them popping in. Like, we've got vision up here. What's the max power usage of a shield? Uh, very, 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 very large. But only for a very short amount of time. Uh, see this curve right here? This is what happens when a shield gets hit. Um, the faster... The more hit points it's missing, the faster it regenerates. And then... That curve is... It's got less hit points to replace, so it slows down with how much energy it's consuming. Uh, and the bigger the hit, the bigger the spike. So, like, even on this little ship, we peaked at 69 megawatt uh, when a shield got hit by one of the bigger... Uh, one of the bigger rocks... Moving at 216 speed with uh, 610 container stress. I think the biggest rocks are like these ones. I could be wrong. Oh, maybe it went through like a asteroid field or something. Well, it wouldn't have been an asteroid field for this one because we found all of those. Um... But when it goes through... Wait, I should probably... I should probably be a little bit more careful here. Um, we might actually... Not make it back home without help. If I keep this up. Can we get some repairs? There we go. Some of the biggest, fastest rocks will... Blow down a shield in one pop. Yeah, that's exactly what was happening with uh, uh, with this thing. We had double shields. It would pop the first shield and take like 50% off the second shield. Um, we only have like one uh, gigawatt of power from the high temp turbine generator. And the worst spike that we saw the whole time that we were running this thing, was about 25% or so, like over 250 megawatts was consumed uh, for a very, very, very brief moment uh, when shields got popped. But suffice to say, I mean, that's a much, much, much larger amount than the so-called... I think it's I think it lies to you and says max consumption one megawatt here. It's one megawatt just to have it. Shield. Yeah, 44, 44 megawatt. Just just having the shield sit idle. Actually, I guess even if you switch them off, they're consuming one megawatt. Um, but yeah, they consume far, far, far more when they're regenning. What's our ETA to get home? 32 seconds. Fantastic. Okay. 
Should we try uh, an energy-based small antimatter ship? I think that sounds fun. So instead of this, I think we'll go for double fluid isothermics. Where the heck are they? And I can't exactly offset the uh, shield projector. We're going to get hit on the right. I think if we put it here, we can just get away with it. Maybe. Probably. I think this is pretty similar to a small, like, cheat ship that I made, except... I think the shield generator has to be back here. Seifercat, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? Yeah, that looks a bit better. Spaceship console. I'm a little bit concerned... Yeah, that's too close. Hmm. What if... What if this was here? And the shield generator could go here. And... Pipe like this. It was a nice stream, if abbreviated, due to being on the other side of the world. Indeed. I was able to make a small ship with three by shield. Uh, three of the huge accumulators. I had trouble determining the ship travel limitations. Yeah, yeah, it's not very explicit in uh, what you can actually get away with there. Okay, I don't think that's going to be streamlined. But let's have a look. See what kind of stats we get here. A hundred and eighty hull stress is not that much. Ninety percent streamline, maybe that's fine. You know, a streamline is basically just we can go like ten percent faster or something, right? But since we're probably, since going full speed with the two engines might be a bit much, maybe, I don't know, we could refuel like this if we wanted to. I just hope that the shield isn't too far, it isn't too close to the walls. Uh, for whatever size rock we're going to run into here. But that might just work. Maybe. Alright, let's anchor back at Hagen Orbit. And... How many tiles... Is this? Seven. Seven below where the fuel needs to go. One, two, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fantastic. Uh, and then we're just gonna get rid of the gun turrets. Get rid of all this. Uh, realize that I shouldn't have anchored here. Good talk. And copy pasta. This is our new prototype. 
Give me some more spaceship walls just in case. Why are we not picking these up? Is this outside of Robo? I don't think so. No, it looks like these are already dibs. There we go. Okay. Is this as small as we can get for the uh, for this version of this thing? Not sure. this inserter. Damn those time zones? Indeed. Uh, everyone had me... well, everyone. Uh, someone had me worried that we were gonna have to... wait, can we make this shorter? We can. We can move all of this down a tile, right? Ah, uh, okay. Luckily, Piccadilly's has us covered. I don't think we can do the console, but that's alright. Be slightly faster. Piccadilly's, yes, yes indeed. Alright, so we're down to 172 hull stress in a legit double antimatter engine, one shield generator, two fluid isothermic ship. And I'm pretty sure if I put the... like this, we might get away with this, maybe. Uh, but if I put the shield generator too far forward, we're definitely getting hit at the back from the sides. So let's give this thing a try. Oops. You might be able to get 100% streamlined now. Um, I don't think so. I don't think I can put... No, I, I can't put any walls here. Like, we're stretching it already that these walls might get hit even if the shield blocks a rock, depending on the size of the rock, but um, if we, like, turn off the shield so that we can place these here, they're definitely, definitely going to get hit. Yeah. Alright, let's try going to Asimi's orbit. Engage. What kind of speed we're going to get. The thing is, the faster it goes, the less problematic it is that the shields don't stick out much to the side as well. So it might actually help us uh, if this is going scarily fast. But we're already getting uh, energy bottlenecks. Wow, what the hell? Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, we might need an accumulator or two for this, I think. Let's go back. Wait, do, do I carry Aquium accumulators? No, I really should. Back to Hagen Orbit. And I want to see that... Okay, so Small Rock doesn't accomplish anything. That's really quite trivial. Uh, a rock of this size... Like this one might... Yeah, look at that! The, the second smallest rocks just absolutely murder... Um, our shield... Uh, our, our energy generation. 
but I'm sure with an accumulator or two, uh, it's going to be totally fine. Naquium accumulator, we can fit four. Which is going to be max output 100 megawatt. Which, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but 100 megawatt is a little bit more than 4 megawatt. The max output. Um, also, I would like to just carry a few of these around. You should still be on the way. Yep. Fantastic. Alright, let's try that again. The Simeus Orbit. I don't know how much hull stress we added. We added a little bit of hull stress by adding the accumulators. Uh, you can tell without checking it both ways because... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um... I think I can fix this without going back. Okay, we've got seven poles. One, two, three, four, five. Fix this rat's nest. That should be fine. Accumulators are charging. Accumulators are still charging very slowly. They should continue to charge when we're going at full speed, as long as we're not hitting rocks. I don't know if they're gonna... If they're gonna be net positive, hitting the occasional... Slightly less small rock. Or not. But I imagine yes. Here we go. That is not as bad as I thought it would be. You could see the dip in the accumulator charge, but only if you were paying attention. Cool. I think this works. How fast are we going to go? 239? At least? Oh, accumulator's draining a bit faster now. Hmm. We're going to average well over 200, but I don't know. It's a little bit random, but I think we're definitely trending downward with the accumulator charge. So we can't keep up 240 consistently, but I mean... We've already traveled like 10 or 20% of the way to our destination. Also, I started this without the accumulators charging up all the way as well. We could all, always base our target speed on accumulator charge. So if they're all completely full, it's going to be trying to go 400. 
And right now the target speed is 55. Oof. Already hull damage? Was there? I don't have my roboports on. I don't see any damage. You sure it wasn't the shield hit points? Yeah, it must have been the shields. Okay. So what I want to know is... If we're out in the open, like, not, not many rocks, uh, what kind of average speed is this going to settle on? With our power bottleneck. Why don't we just stop until the accumulator's full? Or at least until the target speed is above 240. Um, six fours are 24. Yeah, target speed should already abo uh, be above 240. Target speed 113. I don't understand. Hundred and eighteen? Oh, it's percentage, not megawatt, uh, not megajoules. Derp. Of course it is. It's a quick way if your target is close to accumulators times 100. Indeed. You can directly link them, use accumulator signal for speed. Yes, that's what we're doing. Um, you can change the signal output type, so you don't need a combinator, we're just, uh, each of these will output 100 speed if the accumulators are full, so our target speed will be well above, uh, what the engines are capable of, so if we're down to like 60% energy, our target speed is going to drop below what the engines can do. Um, but yeah, I'm curious as to what kind of average speed we're going to get. Uh, if we start with the accumulators... If we start with our target speed at more than 240. Clever? Thank you. So what is it now? 177. 78... 79, 180, 181. Why did it flick past those 2% faster? That's weird. I think if we want to get more out of a ship like this, we want, uh, like, two more fluid isothermics, but, like, how the hell are we going to fit them? We definitely have to make the ship slightly wider. Literally just one tile wider at the back, but then we'd need like another... I, I think uh, we'd need another shield generator or two if we literally just make it one tile wider. Like we're already cutting it so close. If we go for like a quad engine layout... I dare say we would need more than, like, three shields to support it. We could try it, though. Let's go to the drawing board while this charges up. So... Instead of this... We would do this. And we definitely need more than more than one shield generator. Ooh, maybe. 
I, I like where this is going. Pointy boy, indeed. This is the same uh, pointy bit we've got at the front of our our haulers. I just realized we're basically just starting to make our haulers again. Look at this. Yeah, this this is literally just the beginning of making our haulers all over again. The shields that's, that face the sides, um, they hardly ever consume more than one megawatt. So they don't, like, they're not as expensive as these two. But, yeah, we've got like a six megawatt passive drain. How fast are they? 216.8. And the, this isn't actually enough fluid isothermics to keep them going indefinitely. Um, this is, by the way, with 600 container stress, though. So maybe if we're making a cut-down version of that that, like, doesn't use containers and uses a minimum of... Uh, now we still need room for at least a few fluid isothermics. Say four. Um, we can't split these further apart without leaving a gap. Oh. No, I was wrong. Um, if you put them closer together, they leave a gap. I don't know about that shield covering this part, though. That, that's not very convincing at all. Then again... No, this is even worse. It's like one tile here, as opposed to two. Even though this one's longer. So I don't think we can put that there. Uh, we need this to go here. And console can go here. And something like this. We'll smooth it out a bit. But I want to see what kind of hull stress we're looking at. Boop, boop, ba doop, doop, doop. Okay, so what was it? 610 for the haulers. And this is only 309, so it should go quite a bit faster. Um, I imagine it's going to be dealing with about the same kind of rocks, is the thing. We've got 2 megawatt less passive draw because there's only two shields two four six eight uh maximum from the fluid isothermics as opposed to 20 i don't know the hope is that even though it's going to go faster because of the hull stress being lower, we might not be dealing with as many big rocks, or relatively big rocks. Too wide, indeed. Two side by side, pointing forward. Oh no, that leaves a gap in the middle. Console in the middle, yeah. Uh, let's see how this one performs. Or, yeah, let, let's see what kind of average speed we end up with. Uh, from the Drake? Is that what this is? Yeah. Alright, let's aim for Hankerus. 
Or how about aim for shattered skies so that we're not cluttered with these other... with these haulers. Target speed 400. It's going to accelerate to max speed, and once the accumulated charge gets down to like 60%, we're going to see that target speed dropping below 240. And I'm curious where it more or less equalizes. Welcome, welcome. Fraser K, hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Accumulator's missing? Yeah, I know. But... Four fluid isothermics versus, what, ten? I know our requirements are less for the smaller version, but I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to cut it. We can fit six accumulators in here. Empty tiles, 38. Empty tiles, 30. So that's costing us whole stress. 38. 38. That just barely costs us anything. So we can have uh, five of these. Also, we can probably trim this down a bit. Not quite that much, please. It looks a bit wonky. Wait, what? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. That looks weird. I, I guess. Uh, yuck. Uh, yuck. Wait, I can move these back. Now it's just a straight diagonal. That's a little bit better. All right, is this streamline? Yes, it is. Okay. I don't think this is going to work, but I'm curious to see how it performs. I think it's going to go too fast for the shields. For, for the power bottleneck for the shields. We've basically got about one megawatt to spare for each of these. Yeah, we've got like a little bit less than four megawatt to spare if the shields are fully charged. Don't forget about your other ship currently flying. I know. Oh. Rocks are hitting the back sometimes as well. Okay, that pretty much disqualifies it no matter how well it performs. Um... Accumulator charge is still trending downward. Target speed is 152 now. And there goes another rock. Yeah, so we're now going slow enough that the rocks coming in from the side are hitting, hitting the stuff at the back. Well, that won't cut it. Let's go back to Hagen Orbit. We'll be there in about five minutes. Maybe it's better if we don't listen to the accumulators. 
just go as fast as we can, and when the shield slows us down, the shield slows us down. But I think that'll end up at about the same speed? Eventually? Time to hydrate. So it's basically just going to go full speed until accumulated charge hits zero. Then all power is going to go to the shield. And then it's going to accelerate to go as fast as it can again. We're going to gain like a little bit of accumulated charge before it hits a decent sized rock again. And we're going to get really inconsistent speeds. I wonder if it would be safer overall, though, from the rocks coming in from the sides. I still wouldn't, uh, you know, wouldn't commit to using this. You know what I'd really love to see in, like, a future version of SE is, like, procedural shield shaping. So we can be a bit more granular than, than all of this. Oh, there goes our shit. Ooh, close. Rocks are getting really close uh, to the reactors at max speed. Yeah, but they don't hit it, I don't think. But yeah, we're definitely cutting it close with this. What's our ETA? About two minutes. To get back to Hagen orbit, theoretically, but probably not. Okay. How well do you think this is going to work? We've got two fewer shield projectors, but really it's like minus. 0.2 shield projectors because the ones that face the sides don't get hit much compared to the haulers and we've got like half less than half no we've got exactly half the stress so it all depends on how much like despite the fact that this is going to go faster do we get like smaller rocks to deal with or not. I guess we'll find out. Wall piece with inbuilt shield would be cool. Oh yes, very much so. Maybe be able to place shield buildings like wall pieces that have to be powered from a nearby shield generator. Interest. Oh no. Oh no. I didn't think it would one-shot the poor little engine. Damn. Uh, you know what? I think we should stop. And I, and I think we should redesign our ship ever so slightly to make sure we make it home. Um... I guess it's not going to be able to be symmetrical. 
but we can get close. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. It's the only way to be sure. Sheep Seymour, welcome in. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. I wonder what our top speed with this is. Surely it's it, it's definitely faster than 50% of 240, right? Let's do that nuke. What are we going to nuke? Uh, here we go. Sheep Seymour, this one's for you. Nuke to celebrate, indeed. Fantastic. Okay. What's our speed now? I say we take off and nuke the entire site for more. Looks like it's gonna be like 160 or so. 170 maybe. It's the only way to be sure. Kariyam Kariyama? Did I hear an explosion? Bakuretsu la la la. Let's go. Fantastic. And there we go. One sixty speed. We're not going to get much faster than this, but I wonder if it can manage. So we've got like three megawatt to go to the shield now. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. One more with feeling? It's the only way to be sure. It's the only way. Let's get the drop off. There we go. Maybe I should have... Uh, there's no way to design like a symmetrical ship with one engine with this. Because these are 2x2 two two, and the engines are 5x. Sad. It is pretty sad because this would actually work pretty well. It's a little bit slow though. 160 when we've got antimatter engines. Come on now. When do we get home? Two seconds. I think I can wait that long. Alright, let's put this about here so that we can build around it uh, to make the next version. Just delete that. So let's see. We need something like this. But why don't I just like at least temporarily blueprint it? Also, why is there a bot hovering here? Get out of here. Okay. So this goes about here. And I'm sure we've got enough antimatter to test it. Gonna need some power. Um, can I get past this? There we go. Empty space is already way below. Well, like we are paying whole stress for every tile here at this point. So let's grab these add on power poles again. And we're going to need a 
What's the minimum number here? Here and one in the middle. All right, that should be everything. How likely is this to work? I give it like 60%. Or maybe 40. 35. Why is this flashing? Because we didn't connect it. Uh, I'm, I'm fresh out of... Add on power poles. But how about we just grab this, put this here, and... Voila. That'll do. It's like a kite. Shattered skies. Earth shaker ready. All right, uh, how fast are we gonna go? Already at two twenty. It jumped up four in the time that I was about to say how fast it was. Two seventy five, two eighty, two eighty five. I think this is capable of three hundred, uh, which means I think we're gonna get bigger rocks that we than we can handle. More than likely. More faster, indeed. Uh, we're losing accumulator charge. It's steady now. It's very slowly climbing. 780 megajoules and back down to 770. So, to the surprise of no one, it's trending downward, but 313 speed already. Damn. That is a little bit more than I was expecting. But maybe we should just add more accumulators so it can sprint further. I mean, I can only fit one more. Yeah, it's going to be like 315 top speed. The accumulator charge is actually lasting a while, especially for how fast we're going. Hmm. Yeah, this is better than I thought it would be. It doesn't look like we're in danger of the engines being hit. But uh, we need a bigger sample size to be sure. Extend the nose by two tiles to jam a lot more accumulators in. Uh, you mean like two more or one more? This isn't too bad though. I bet with one or two more accumulators, uh, we could easily sprint to Fo and Estra and back. Especially because we're going like 50% faster, almost, than our haulers do. That's pretty cool. We're settling on 314 speed. 
but we're down to like 25% accumulator charge. I don't know how much I let it charge up to begin with, though. That's really good, and perhaps it doesn't need that many antimatter tanks. Uh, that's true, but it's not like I can fit... Huh. Huh. Redesign? Antimatter boost tank. This would have to go up one tile, but we could fit 50% more power. Oh? Is, are we still going to get away with the shield angle here? I mean, it's worth a try, right? It's got to be worth a try. I'd like to give it more accumulators. I don't care about the whole stress. It's already... It's so much faster than I... Uh, than I had in mind. And it's obviously having more power problems. Back to Hagen Orbit, please. But first, let's wait for the accumulators to charge. Once we stop pouring power into the shields... Once we stop pouring power into the shields... Whoa. That flipped pretty quickly. Yeah, I'll just let that fill up and then we'll point it back to Hagen Orbit. We should get there pretty quickly, pretty smoothly. Pass-through generator? Indeed, indeed. Oops. Yeah, this, this pattern has potential. What kind of hull stress do we have? 317. What if we make room for another accumulator here? Nah, that looks... that's gonna look silly. I don't like that. I guess I could do this. And then we've just literally got diagonals. Very, very basic shape, but what are you going to do? I do our holders look a little bit better. All right. I mean, I'm sure we're still going to need a good, an, a good amount of accumulators. We've now got six as opposed to, uh, for our much reduced uh, power requirements, or well, somewhat reduced power requirements compared to a hauler. Uh, we've got six out of ten fluid isothermic generators. And they've got nine accumulators, which is way more than they need. This one has eight. I think it'll go pretty far before it has problems. What's the cha uh, charge on an accumulator? Uh, max output is 25 megawatt and max input is 2.5. It can hold 250 megajoules. Or to put it in, to put it another way, uh, 125 continuous seconds of a fluid isothermic generator running with no other power drain.
Except it takes at least a hundred seconds to charge. Black accumulators are 250, yes. And the isothermics are 2 megawatt. Might be better off pure accumulator. Well, we have to have some power generation. We're never going to get all the way somewhere on accumulators. I mean, you, you, you can. It's not a very good idea. Uh, are we charged yet? I kind of want to see how far it gets on a full charge, so we'll wait. And I might just go ahead and build this back at home. Should really clean out those old hemp uh, blueprints. Computer addict, welcome in if I didn't say so. So, what if we take this basic design and scale it up just a little bit? I, I guess have as many of these as you want or alternatively no that doesn't work alright This is still only four. What about this? Well, that's a bit better. We don't need that many tanks, right? Yeah, I don't mind that. Or I guess this looks a bit more consistent. Then what's the minimum of shields for this? I think if they're only two tiles apart... No, that should work. Is that what we do here? Yeah, it is. Uh, and then we would have... That's That's not good enough. Just barely. We wouldn't be able to get away with this uh, regardless, but it might be an option if it actually fit. I don't know, maybe this would work. Uh, I feel pretty sketchy about this part. No, we'd have to have walls here as well. Yeah, no. So how about this? That's not too bad. And I'm completely confident that that's enough shielding on the sides. Alright, let's, uh, let's send this thing back to Hagen Orbit. See how far we get on the accumulator charge at full speed. A three shielder? Oh, that's a good idea, actually. Uh, so we steal this pattern. Yeah, that should be fine. 
I like that a lot. And then we put the console right in front of it. And we have some pretty minimal... walls over here. Preferably a nice smooth curve. That's too sudden. This one starts like that. Wait, is that it? No, that's a bit too... Juts out too much over here. That's almost right. Alright, it's not going to be perfect with this angle, but that looks pretty decent. So we've got six fluid isothermics for six engines and three shields. I don't think that's enough. I, I think the ship needs to be a bit longer. And we can definitely get away with that. So something closer to this. Ten engines. Twelve engines. Yeah, I like this, I think. Uh, this curve could be a bit better. Yeah, that's not quite right. Five. Four. Three. Two, one. That doesn't look too bad. I think we can just flip this, right? Yeah, I like that. Okay, what kind of... Oh, how's our ship performing, by the way? We're already down to 25% uh 25% accumulator charge since we started again. But we only have 32 seconds to go to Hagen orbit. It's going to be close, but we'd almost make it there with uh, with some accumulator charge left. Okay. So let's keep designing this one. I guess I kind of spent most of the stream today. Oh, it's only 8.15. Okay. I was going to say, we've spent most of the stream today just designing spaceships for fun. What do we think this is? Some kind of game? Viking Gamer, thank you very much for the four months. Much appreciated. And welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. I love that we only have to pour one resource into these ships. Um, I guess the shield generators can go back a tile. And so can console. And so can this whole mess of walls. What kind of hull stress are we at? Ooh, almost 500. That's not bad or anything, it's just... Not quite on the scale, uh, not quite on the same scale that I thought we were still on, if that makes sense. So kind of like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Fuel input? You just did it. Yes, indeed. Viario, welcome in. Didn't get any super large rocks? Yeah, no. Uh, they wouldn't be super large with that small of a hull stress. But I was wondering if going above a certain speed we would get rocks that we can't handle. Alright, let's go back to Hagen Orbit. And... Oh. I guess we could try this version first, before we build the one that we just designed. Let's see how it handles. And I forgot power poles again. <laughs> uh, let's just do this. Close enough, right? Oh my lord. 160 speed already. I'm much more interested in the version that we just designed, though. Um, did we, like, blueprint it yet? I don't think so. Oop. And I don't think we have room to just squeeze it in here. Oh, maybe? Uh, not quite. It doesn't fit on top of, like, these fuel tanks, right? No, it doesn't. Which means I want to drain this thing out. Something like this. Just de-anchor it, blueprint the new one. Uh, it's fine. Let's just do it this way. How are we doing in this version? Oh, we already lost an engine. Uh, rip in pepperoni's engine. Uh, whatever. Close enough. It's a very weird design. Let's go back to Hagen Orbit. Hopefully without losing any more engines. I've got a spare just in case. But, oh my god. Call a spade a spade. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, one minute back to Hagen Orbit. Well, this one was fast. How fast did it go? 3.05, damn. That's a little bit faster than I thought. That rock was awfully close. It would have hit the old engine. Okay. Back at Hagen Orbit, and we should probably power this pump. Tubskate. Tubskate? Tubskate. Tubskate. Sigma Bean, thank you very much for the nine months. Very much appreciated. 
Welcome in Twitch, baby. Indeed. Thank you so much. I'm not as worried about little bits of hull stress with these... Uh, with these ships. So we're looking at 481. And we almost have the full empty tile bonus. Almost. Oh, I haven't put any accumulators in this one. So we've got a maximum of 24 megawatts. That's not going to cut it. Luckily, we can fit these very cozily in the front. Unluckily, that puts us up to 505 hull stress. But I'm sure we're still going to be pretty damn fast with six engines and only 505. Uh, you know what? Make some room to pump this faster. That's still really full. Whatever. You better be a good dad? Uh-oh. Hey, we're here. Anchor to Hagen Orbit, once more, and um, I guess just connect that up. What is the point of being under 500 if the limit is 4k? Uh, there's, there's no point, it's just kind of arbitrary. I'm just trying to make a relatively small ship that, that'll go fast. And I think this is, this is about the limit of what I have in mind for a small ship. Smallish ship. Gets more zoomy? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Alright, so we'll wait for the accumulators to charge up. And then we'll see how this one performs. So we've got... More eng... Uh, sorry, engines. We've got more fluid isothermic generators, just by a little bit, compared to our haulers. Uh, but we've also got more engines. Although it only takes one fluid isothermic to feed two engines, pretty much. Uh, we're going to be spending more energy on shield projectors, though. But then again, the the haulers actually lose accumulator charge very slowly, going at max speed. So I don't know, this might almost break even. Um, I think the accumulator charge is going to drain as we fly, just not very quickly. Alright, that's it. Let's give this thing a whirl. This time we have no worries whatsoever about the shields covering the, the back engines. As opposed to the front engines. Even when we're going slowly, we shouldn't be getting hit. Accumulated charge already went down to 248, but it went back up to 249. Oh. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. 
That's faster than expected. Oh no. I think we are past the point where fluid isothermics are any good. Front engines, pod racer design, indeed. Now this is pod racing. Yeah, we've lost like a quarter of our accumulator charge already. How fast is it though? Holy, 314 already. So if you want to set a speed limit on this thing, it's probably, uh... Like, like if we set this to 217 or whatever it is that our haulers do, maybe we're not, uh, losing accumulator charge quite so quickly. Hey all, Dylan, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Uh, how fast, have, how far, rather, have we... That's pretty far that we've gone already. Yeah, so it's a, it's a good sprinter. Could probably use... Honestly, maybe even just swap a couple of fluid isothermics for accumulators. Might be the way to go. I don't know. Or just make it a little bit bigger. If we used more of this space... Uh, it's very hard to fit more fluid isothermics in, though. We can get, like, two more in quite easily. But I don't think that's going to make the difference. Still, uh, not too bad. I suppose. But yeah, if, if we're already making a power plant this big, I'm oh, sorry, more like this, this, this big-ish, uh, then we're already getting into the territory where we might as well use a anti-reactor high temp turbine generator. Oh, not that version. Was this the one we settled on? I think it was. So that is most of this ship, actually. Good grief. I'm still on team battery, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, high temp turbine generators are just too big. If you're trying to stay within a smaller profile. You know, the more... Uh, the more time I spend... Uh, playing with ship designs again. Let's go back to Hagen Orbit. Before our accumulator charge runs out. Actually, I'm curious as to how it handles itself when the accumulator charge does stop. As long as we don't lose shields, which I don't think we will. I don't think any of the rocks are big enough to pop a shield. It's just gonna... It's just gonna have no power for a sec, cruising... With the uh, fluid isothermics desperately trying to recharge the shields. And we're gonna keep going slower and slower. Until the shield's fully recharged, and then we start using the engines again. Yeah, I think it's safe. Like Ben said before, two shields facing forward would be nicer. Uh, yeah, but they're not going to cover the whole ship at this size. You can fit six minutes of isothermic output in the same place, in the same space of batteries. Um, probably? I think adding engines 
when we're trying to do fluid isothermics is probably not the way, right? Like, this thing should probably just still have four engines. If we simply cut off this, it's probably a better ship. Like, significantly better. I was going to say I'm just about done with playing with ship designs for the moment, but now I want to see how that handles. So it's going to be like... Like this. Yeah. Whoops. No. Whip. Step. No. Okay. It's going to be like this. More or less. How about we just do that? It doesn't look too terrible. So we're back down to four engines. Hull stress goes down to 389. I don't think it's going to help that much. I think it's going to be almost as fast. And the real issue was just shield power consumption. Maybe we'd be better off with lasers with these smaller ships. If you haven't got that much laser damage research, though, it's a little bit sketchy. What's our ETA? A minute. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'll... Uh... I don't know if I'll bother with seeing how this one performs. I think I'd rather... Start playing with some bigger ships again. Lasers have a similar reaction time problem as guns, yes. But the rocks that we're dealing with with this small hull stress are uh, really small, is the thing. Lasers are a lot more energy efficient um, than shield projectors. We're getting rid of the same stuff. If you could just force the lasers to stay ready, um, they'd be so much more effective. You could always use both, um, except you really want to have the lasers well ahead of the shields, unless you want to do vice versa. Um, but yeah, you want to try and catch everything with the lasers and just use the shields as like a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, final line of defense. That means... That means having the ship go all the way up here. Safeguard. Yeah, exactly. This way the lasers will shoot down all the small fry. Kind of like what we've got going on over here. Yeah, the more I the more I play around with designs, the more pleased I am all over again. Looking back at the uh, looking back at our hauler design, because small. Small ships with shields uh, are very, very difficult to pull off. Uh, and this just manages it. But really, you want to use shields when you've got a big enough ship that energy is not an issue. Alright. 
right. Does this go here? Wait, what? Energy shield is in the way. Rude. Very, very rude. Uh, let's see. This part here is... 6 tiles below where the pipe needs to be. Two, four, six, right? There we go. And I want to drain this. That's going to take a little while. And I don't really feel like going to the trouble of speeding it up. So why don't we just go uh, build something productive? Should probably go and see why Rocket Reusability 17 hasn't moved in ages. Or has it? I'm pretty sure it hasn't. We are missing Rocket Tech cards. That is not what I was expecting. Rocket tech cards. There isn't a train load. Is it just that we have to set the request? I think it's I think it's literally just that. No? Um We're requesting two hundred stacks. Okay, we have a million here. Oh, this isn't LTN. <laughs> Well, there's your problem. <laughs> okay. Alright. I see how it is. Okay, I deserve that. Actually, I don't think it even needs the five seconds inactivity there. Is the first research after a long time? Yeah, it's because we ran out of those upstairs. Oh. The train came so fast I didn't get a chance to name the station. That, that really was fast, damn. I guess I should have named it before connecting the wire. Um, are we actually going to see a launch here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. No? Once this is down to 200, we need to consume 200 and, uh, 456 satellite telemetry. Well, surely making 10,000 rocket tech cards... No, 20,000 uh, is going to be enough to trigger that. How long is it going to take, though? This is the vanilla scheduled train. It's going to go up the space elevator. Once it fills up, that takes a while with stack size 200. Um... We've still only got a couple of machines here. I left room to expand it. What's this? 3.19 per second. That should be all we ever need. Rename LTN station and switch it back on. Yes. Thank you. Okay. There we go. And here comes another train. Nope, that one's finishing up. Nope, I was... I was wrong. Cool, cool, cool. So now we've got... Rocket Tech cards. Uh, just about to arrive. 
quick stop off at the depot. Just in case. I, I don't even train limit these, so I guess that's not really necessary on this end. It's kind of like a Rube Goldberg machine because the space elevator doesn't work with LTN without another mod. But there it goes. That's going to science. Fantastic. Alright, what's next? Honestly, I still feel like playing with spaceships today. But they're going to take their sweet time draining this uh, antimatter. Just tuned in. What's the goal for the new spaceship design? Uh, well, from, we've, we've been doing a few things, but lately I was trying to make a fast ship uh, that uses fluid isothermics and also shields. That's smallish. Uh, and what's that? What that has been to uh, teaching me all over again is just how good our hauler design is because uh, it pulls it off. I mean, it's only. 216 speed, but yeah, fluid isothermic generators and shield generators, projectors, uh, and a bunch of accumulators. The fluid isothermics aren't enough to keep up with the shield generators, but they more than last the distance for a trip. Question in between, which mod is required for LTN to function with elevators? Uh, I thought they did work. Um, maybe they do by now. But uh, not too long after I settled on my mods for this playthrough, uh, someone introduced a mod that made LTN work with space elevators. Uh, I don't know the name of it. Your SE version made them work. Fantastic. And also loaders work with uh, going straight into cargo wagons. I'd love to use that next time. I feel like loaders should be vanilla, honestly. You could just gate them behind a certain amount of research or something. Oh yeah, how's our circuits doing? Judging by this, not very well. Yeah, we sh should be saturated by now if we had enough production of advanced circuits. I'm a little bit concerned there. Are we still struggling with blank data cards? We must be. Okay, the fact that two of these are in motion uh, right now tells me it's probably not that bad. We might still just be playing catch-up. And maybe what we've got is already fast enough kind of hard to know with these graphs. Last hour, 1.7k per minute. Last 10 hours, 1.2. Or less than that. Less than 1k consumption. Okay. How much do we need if we were going to spam this? 100 per second. I think I calculated that what I built downstairs only does 70. And that's if we're not making processing units. 145. Oh, it must have been three of these. Yeah, we're probably just playing catch up from when we were behind. Loaders can load straight into cargo wagons now. I had mini loaders for that. Uh, yeah. Apparently they can. Apparently.
I'm getting impatient. I might even just let this antimatter disappear. It's not a copious amount. A2 loaders were using the vanilla loader code, which we've updated to allow loading into trains now. So K2 inherited that. Very cool. Yeah, I think I remember people talking about that at the time. Crap. He killed the pump. Oh, we're down to like three digits over here. Good, good, good. I mean, I could always just place a new ship somewhere else, like over here. Okay. Should probably drink some caffeine at this point. I think I'm on the mend. Alright, uh, what should we refactor? Is this empty? Nah, surely, surely not. That's why we're trying to spam research. Well, that's one reason. Um, I don't think we need the old biomatter builds. Oh god, that's a lot of stuff. Oh boy. Um, and this is already saturated. Okay, did I turn off the inputs for these? Uh, where is the input? On this side. I did not. Probably should have thought of that sooner. And... Do we already send biomatter up with the new stuff? We don't. Why don't we put a few more resources over to the new system? Where should we start? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We could do all the green things on one half block. Kind of want to put it right here. Let's do that. Oh, the train's not full. There we go. And we're bringing some big containers, right? Uh, yes. Not sure why we're carrying exactly one storehouse. Oh yeah, how's Arcospheres? I don't see motion, but that might be because science is frozen for other reasons. Looks like everything... There's no Deep Space Science 3. No thermofluid? No Naquim plate? What happened? Oh, don't tell me some of the mines are running out. I hadn't even thought about that in such a long time. No, we've got ingots here. What? 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 You, what? Oh, I switched this off at some point. And forgot to switch it back on, I guess. Oops. Um, okay, so, unless there's, like, not enough room here, no, it looks fine. D2 
Deep Space Science should be in motion again. Haven't noticed because we've been spamming other research. Oops, indeed. Welcome in, Shatka. Winsinger, welcome in, by the way. Alright, so there's the Naquium. I haven't even looked at it in such a long time. How much Naquium do we have left at our mines? Uh, 6.3 million still. Yeah, that's going to last a while. 6.5 million plus like, call it like 6.8 or so. And this one is 6.9. Nice. Can't remember if we made a fourth. I don't think we did. Whatever the case, it really does feel like that's going to be enough for the rest of the playthrough. Maybe I shouldn't have been so stingy with, like... No, if, if I did use Naquitite to convert matter, especially considering the way we're deleting matter all the time, um, to keep the ships moving, because core franks, I feel like, no matter how careful I was with the priorities, we would end up looping or something, like pointlessly wasting Naquitite, converting matter. And you better believe those millions of Naquitite would disappear a lot more quickly uh, if we do something like that. Get rid of this before I even forget that it was there. Okay. Should we do some more novelty ships today? What other arbitrary targets can we go for? Let's park over here. And I'll need the floor train as well. Because I want to convert this block directly. So we don't have to move the stuff around as much. Have we beaten both endings yet? Uh, we've done the spaceship ending and we've done intergalactic transceiver. Okay, I need to find all the vanilla scheduled trains for these things, and switch them off. No longer will we have one train for each of these resources. I don't know where the nothing train is. That's always a hard one to find, the nothing train. Okay, and I wanted to put uranium together with these just because they're all green. And I'm pretty sure uranium is slow enough that it really doesn't matter where we put it. Okay. So we've got six. Uh, why don't we just put it all here? Uh, six resources that we need to move around. What's the... Pro oh. Okay, then. Now some nice big containers. Perfect. No, don't you pick it up. God damn it.
give it back. Alright. So pick up all the epoxy. Toss it over here. I could use uh, even distro for this, but it's a pretty short trip. Disregarding any sense of fashion, could an ugly ship be more efficient? Uh, as long as it doesn't displease Symmetria. Then it would probably explode on launch. 16 Vitalik Epoxy. Okay, next is... You know what, I think I will try... How many stacks is this? 320, 640. Oh. Oh. Do we have some more plating we can place over here? Need a little bit more. Okay. I'm pretty sure... Surprisingly, you can copy settings across those two different containers. We're going to go into even distro, advanced settings, change the distribution delay to five seconds, control, click drag, and make sure we go over here within five seconds. That should move all of them. There we go. No epic spill today. Doubt is in shambles. Alright. Didn't pick up any more. Nope. Next is... Vitamelange extract. That should do it. That should do it. There we go. Uh, and then... Spice. You can refresh the timer by dragging this over a container. There we go. And I don't think I'll risk messing it up from all the way over here. Let's just grab these. Fertilizer. Yoink, yoink, yoink. How fast do you think we can get, uh... What was it? Basically this ship design. Tweak it a little bit. Maybe some more engines? I think we really want to go for the inverted V. To make the most of the way this is the best we can get for density for horizontal engines. And keep it streamlined. And not add too much area by making it bigger. The ultimate cir circumflex? Circumflex. Let's grab the reagent. 
that goes in here. And that should be the last one. I guess... I could put all this green stuff over here, but I feel like the stuff I'm going to want to put there. This just feels a bit better organized. Five percent on Rocket Seventeen? What's five percent of one million? Uh fifty thousand, right? Fifty thousand science since we fixed it. Almost. Uh, I think that's it. Cool. I guess we'll just go ham with decon and deal with it when the bots overfill the construction train. Might be the easiest way to do this. Oops. That wasn't meant to happen. Shouldn't have used control there. Alright. Where's our blueprint? Uh, this one? Yes. Pretty sure we checked and that's up to date. Uh, we do need to change two signals. To chain signals. Otherwise we'll get traffic jams. And then I'm pretty sure we need the train to make one more trip because there's not quite enough uh, bulk rail loaders in the usual layout loadout. Okay. Apparently not enough rail? No, that's me. Because I stole it. Oh, is that everything? Yes, yes it is. Cool. Back to the mall with you. Fifty K indeed. Um okay. So I think we'll put reagent. Actually, let's start with spice. Spice extract. Uh, what's this? Bioscrubber, fertilizer. And then... And then epoxy and reagent. And I'll put the uranium here as well. And 
my god. I can't type. Whatever. Uranium dash. That's the one I was looking for. That's kind of hard to see. Uh, what if I replace these? Reagent. And epoxy. That's okay, I guess. Alright. So this one is spice fertilizer reagent. Spice Fert Reag and two thirty eight. That's gonna be the station name. Or rather the uh the station name is gonna be the Transmitter channel name. And then on this side we've got Extract Scrub Poxy 235. Scrub Poxy and 235. And then that is going to be the name for this one. Uh, we should go ahead and find all the green stuff trains. Uh, go find... Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that we don't need to make it to a schedule. Because we already moved, uh, shuffled this stuff around. So reagent goes in here. Where is this train? Oh, I didn't put it on automatic. We need to set the filters as well. That's the third one down. Uh, bottom one is M238, and then we've got fertilizer and spice. We have room to add some LTN trains, not really? Oh, that's supposed to have a two symbol. Two length LTN trains. Um, I don't know how many are in motion right now, but I think we're actually kind of close to capacity already. So we'll just retire this one. We only need one train for four of these resources. Next one is fertilizer. Here it is. If I can't find them easily like this, I can do a search with factory, factory search. And then we've got uh, spice and uranium. Not that uranium. Uh, 
Okay, I might actually have to search for spice. Well, why don't I move it first? What the... Oh, Navsat. Alright. Epoxy... goes over here. My inventory is looking a bit full. I could do the, uh... Even distro trick. What was the only other resource here? Spice. Where is Spice Train? Spice, storage, train, here you go. Go drop off over here. And here it comes. Beautiful. Okay, so you're going to be conscripted to have the new schedule. And that's going to be... I should probably make a... Make a thing down here to actually move this stuff. So we're doing... These things are produced quite slowly compared to their stack size. So I really don't mind if the trains have to take from here all the way back down here. Come to think of it... Why are our Vitalik Reagent builds way up here? Because they need tons of lithium chloride, that's why. Yeah, that actually makes tons of sense. I think you forgot to mirror them. Wait, which were we mirroring? Filter's correct on the left side. Uh, yeah, I did flip them. You just can't see it. Uh, it doesn't... You can't see anything when I press F here. Alright. Um, so yeah, we need to build a... Drop things off to go up the space elevator contraption downstairs. So it's for reagent, epoxy, two types of uranium, and spice and extract. And I think it should probably be down here near the spice and extract. Probably build it like here ish. I should probably use an extant block. We want to be trimming down rail blocks eventually. Pair this down to more or less the smallest end game base that it needs to be. We've got so many unnecessary blocks up here. Nearer the space elevator is better. But none of these resources, stack size wise, need to move very fast. So I'm not too worried. So I guess we could just put it like down here. Hello there, Pospec. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, park over here for a sec. Till we have some floor. And construction train should be able to casually one-shot this build. 
And then we can give the station down here a name. Which is going to be the same naming convention as we have up here. Just a little different. Um, and we're doing the northwest one goes to the northwest one, just so it's easy to keep track of things. All right. Fantastic. All right, now we send this one down the space elevator. Hagen down. Uh, we send it to... This thing? No, nope, wrong one. 238. Hurry, 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 hurry. No. Oh, crap. Did I... Did I, like, split it? Is the train confused? It is. Um... Over here, over here, please. Is it is it gonna be okay? All right, I think we're good. I think we're good. So now I'm gonna put it on manual. We're going to steal a schedule from one of the other ones. With a similar job. And we're just going to copy paste edit. So that it's easier not to make mistakes. With the schedule. All right. So to, just to check, we go up the elevator, we stop at a depot just in case. I think I could probably... As long as we only have one train doing a certain schedule, uh, we don't actually need to go to the depot at both ends. But we go up the depot, stop at... Uh, go up, stop at the depot, go to the drop-off, empty, down the elevator, depot... Come here, wait till full. Seems good. Automatic. And then we just need to set requests over here, and I think that's it. Right after we select our channel, so that we know what we've got upstairs. Uh, and of course I need to move these items that we've already got over here. All right, let's do the even distro thing. I think that's going to be easiest. Mark all of these as the button. And control click drag across those containers. We should have plenty of time to do it all the way over here as well. Reagent over here. And just to be super safe to avoid a spill, I'll even distro them in here as well. The emphasis in their button is on the O. Their button. Their their bo their button. Uh this one goes here. And that should be fine. We've got... Hmm. Don't spill, please. Ooh, I really should have either waited a bit or spread it across up here as well. Let's do some of the ones on the right for now. This goes in here. And I'm pretty sure this goes up here. Yeah. 
It's like an O not on the T verboten. As in boat? Verboten? Um, this goes on the right side. I don't remember. I think it was here. Nope. I messed that up. I messed it all up. Let's forbid these two. And spread this. No. What if I do this real quick? That works. Fantastic. Uh, let's hurry up and set our filters, which I should have done ages ago. So we've got... Spice. No, extract. Spicy spice. We've got... Scrub. We've got... Epoxy. And we've got 235. Copy, paste, flip. And that'll sort itself out. And that just leaves spice. Oh, uh, that's not spice. Yeah, we've got plenty of room for spice, I think. Cool, cool, cool. Not going to run out of fuel. Nope. Fantastic. Okay. So now that that's done, the LTN station downstairs via the transmitter and know that we've got X amount of resources up here already. And we've also got a little something to make sure that we know if we're getting a signal. Which is right here. Signal equals one, then output everything. Do you have a rule of thumb for how fast you're allowed to consume a train load from a station? Like, only 60 per second from this station. Typically, I... Usually, I don't want a train to have to come more than, like, every minute or two. But sometimes I'll make an exception. Did you remove the temporary restriction you put on a couple of the station loaders? Uh, good question, no. Let's get rid of all those. There we go. Alright. So on this side we're looking for... Spice. Uh... Fertilizer? Something and 238. What was the other green thing? Spice, fertilizer... What was the other darkish green one? I can't believe I've already forgotten. Uh, reagent, of course. How could I forget reagent? It's been one of the hardest resources to get up to speed with. In the whole playthrough. Wait. Vidim Lunch Spice is stack size 50? I thought it was 200. How could I forget? I remember we were trying to balance spice and extract at the old version of this build. And we had to do some math because of that. Oh. Huh. Okay. So... 50, 100 times 2. Two train loads. 
We'll make that the default. If we have to make it go faster, we'll increase it a bit. I mean, I guess as long as we've only got one train doing the schedule, uh, it really doesn't matter how high we set it. We're not going to accidentally overfill it. But... Um... I'd rather be a bit careful. Worst comes to worst, if only one of the resources in one of these quarter blocks... This stacks to 100, right? Yeah. Uh, if only one of them is overfilled, or two of them, then we're going to end up with some resources sitting in here, which isn't actually a problem as long as it's not completely full and blocking other resources from getting filtered to where they need to go. Uh, but yeah, obviously we'd rather avoid that. But we can fit six train loads in each of these anyway, so... It's going to be a little hard to overshoot by several train loads. And here comes resources. It's Uranium-238. Does that make sense? How much 238 do we have up here? Not that much. Cool, cool, cool. Seems to be working. Let's tag this stuff so we know what we've got here. Spice. I said spice. I said spice. Why do you not place? There we go. Uh, fertilizer reagent 238. Fertilize. Reagent. And two, three, eight. Reagent, correct. All right, so that one's done. And now we have one train bringing up all four of these. Now we just need to do the the last few steps for these four. That is a lot of epoxy. Is this still flowing? It is. Stack size 200. I guess it's not that surprising. Alright. Did I bring all the trains that carry these things? I doubt it. Scrub. And there's epoxy. Well, I don't really even need to give it a condition, because it's not going anywhere else. That's not epoxy. That's vitalic acid. Slight difference. Uh, I don't know where the other trains are. Epoxy is on the left side of the elevator. Sneaky. And there's Spice. And was that all of them? Or I feel like I left out one. Let's see. You were... Scrub. Oh, and it is over full. Not by too much, though. Scrubs, uh, extract, epoxy, and we didn't do 238, I don't think. 235, rather. There we go. And condition doesn't matter. Alright. Salvage the train. That's one. And 
here comes more 238. So yeah, um, we're actually asking for two train loads here. But I think there's already going to be some 238 downstairs because the system doesn't account for what's in the train at the time. Unless we just don't have the supply at that time. Anyway, this one is Dunsky. What? Is my inventory... Oh, wow. Okay. Hold on. I don't know if I emptied this. Uh, they stack, so I must have. Two to go. So how many resources do we, do we have after this? Uh, we already did these two. Oh. I didn't move the stuff that we've already got over here. That's fine. I can just, like... We've gotten rid of the trains that bring this up. So I can just, like, make these a higher priority for pickup. And they'll get consumed and emptied before the stuff up here by LTN. Okay. So we've got like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus eight, eighteen, twenty one. Uh, about 21, or maybe like 24? No, we already moved this. Should just mark that for decon. Uh, anyway, we've got about 24 resources to port over to the new system still. So... We need to do this like three more times, all of that stuff we just did. It's a little bit daunting, but it's not that much. And then we need to do it like twice for the stuff that goes down the elevator. And then we can clean up a lot of this old mess. Alright, let's repurpose this last train. Uh, and that one is... Well, first of all... Let's do the station names downstairs before we send it down the elevator this time. And this needs to be set to that one. Cool. So your job is to go to... Everything including 235 pickup after you go down the elevator. And then we'll do the same copy paste edit the schedule. Oh, there was there was more. I forgot. That's fine. This is still getting emptied, right? There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Here comes our train. Put it on manual. Copy the neighbor's schedule. And... 2.35. Go up here empty, go down here full, up the elevator, depot, drop stuff off empty, down the elevator depot, pick stuff up full. Seems good. 
Now we just need to do the LTN requests. For all of the shinies. All of the bright green ones. Uh, one of these was scrub. I think it, I got it backward actually. No, epoxy is third. Cool, cool, cool. All right. 200, 100 times 2. 50, 100 times 2. And that one's the same. And this one will be half of the first one. Cool. Here comes uranium. Which I guess I could have stolen from where we've already got it upstairs, but it's probably fine. Uh, and then we just want some tags up here. Extract. Scrub. Uh, pox. And... 235. I keep getting the 235, 238 backwards. There we go. But that's it. We're done. One more thing knocked off the to-do list. Science has been going burr. Let's see. Pack. Utility science pack will do for a metric. Or, or that one as well. Uh, looks like it's been solid for at least half an hour. Which is about when we fixed it. Remains to be seen the extent to which we can keep up with things like blank data cards. We had no blanks being made for a long time, so a lot of rail blocks got drained off them. So it's kind of hard to tell quickly uh, if we've got enough to keep up. without doing the math for the, literally, the entire base. I quite like this build. It was definitely a bit of a challenge and not totally satisfying uh, to get the mostly symmetry. To get the belts around this kind of layout. But considering it's a perfect ratio, 6 to 1, or I think it is with higher tier modules, maybe. It's very, very close right now, anyway. Uh, it's basically a perfect ratio. Quite happy with this. That's weird, though. If it's... If it's just speed modules... 33. 3.6 versus 33.4. And if we put high tier speed modules in. Does it just go so fast that... Uh, it rounds, uh, the rounding puts it at, like, a perfect ratio? 
What's 3600%? Oh no, I think it was because... I think it's probably because there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's more speed modules in the big one. So it takes more efficiencies to get it down to... Uh, minus 80%. This is actually plus 100%. Maybe we go with that. This is positive polished data. And that's exact ratio. That's fine. I should really get to producing some higher tier modules. We need to uh, port over moving all of this stuff down the elevator to support the modules. And moving like three kinds of modules. Uh, seven, eight, and nine. Oh, sorry. Six, seven, and eight. Efficiency, prod, speed. Up the elevator. And I don't want to slap it together to use the old system because I really want to get rid of all of this mess. Where we had one train for each of these. Okay. Train out of fuel. I beg to differ. Did we empty this? Oh, I remember this. We need to set a lower provide stack threshold until this gets removed. And then once it's actually empty, we can put this back into the rail network. Cool, cool, cool. All right, what's next? Let's go back to the mall and empty our bulging pockets. Maybe play around with something frivolous like spaceship design. Oh, we could do that. Uh... I was going to say we could do the Bourbonator quest, but my brain's a bit fried for that today at this point, I think. Oh, is this empty yet? It should be. Yeah, it is. That's good enough. Is the construction train empty? Cool, cool, cool. What kind of ship should we design next? We did a, what was it, 1390 something, uh, we did a pretty damn fast, it was more like this actually, but we did a pretty fast, relatively low hull stress ship, uh, just big enough that it can handle squeezing in a my temp turbine generator. Oh, that's right. I kind of wanted to do triple layer shields. We didn't actually see it happen, but if we're unlucky with two very large rocks in the same place at the same time, uh, it would get through two shields. Because the first one breaks the first shield and then the second shield is left on like 50%. Yeah, I think that would probably be the next goal. More or less this, but with more shielding, it may be a little bit bigger. Okay, but for now... Clear out the old inventory...
somewhat. Need some more life support. Yoink. That'll do for now, I guess. Alright. I might take a short break. And figure out what we're going to do next. I think I want to do a, another build refactor. But what... What needs refactoring most? Uh, we're still using ye old industrial... F oh, 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 I remember. I remember. I want to revisit uh, Immersite stuff. Because there's a whole lot of direct belting that I'd like to do here. Maybe even do... Okay, let's see. We, we can take a preliminary look at this. So crushed emosite goes into emosium sulfide, but also... Also what? Nothing? Huh. Crushed emosite... That's holmanite. You buffoon. M site M one M crushed M site only goes into fluid. We're not putting that in the rail network, right? We're not. Okay. Crushed M site goes straight into fluid, and we output sand into the rail network. I can see why I built this this way, but when we have the high tier modules. And faster machines. Uh, we might just skip the rail trip for the fluid. Uh, it does go to two. It does does go to the next two builds. So this wants uh, emersium sulfite and nitric acid, and this one wants silicon powder and. Emosite sulfide. Hmm. How many of them output, like, sand or something? We've got, I think, two byproducts for the entire set, right? Sulfur and sand. So if we did one, two, well, how many outputs are we looking at? What does powder go into? Is it just this? No, it's these two. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to go into more detail with that after the break. Uh, let's do some words and some LTN screensaver. We'll start the words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay, how are we doing? Nicely done. Let's continue with space exploration. Where I just thought we should have a check in on our dispatch system, which it seems like we've been able to take for granted for a little while now. I just like to check that that's actually the case. It's had 15% downtime since we reset this timer. That seems fine. Um, let's check that the counters are correct. We had a problem with them, um, but it seems to be resolved since instead of checking for red greater than green, um, to say that we've got one less ship on the way back, uh, we just reset it when... Uh, we, we, we subtract one when we reset Central's memory cell. Um, for some reason that's been consistent. But more to the point, for some reason it wasn't consistent before, I'm not sure why. Especially considering uh, that this, when the ship lands, resetting its own memory cell uh, has always worked. But let's see, I just want to check randomly a few of these. Core frag. Uh, erudite. All surfaces, storage. And we should see... Oops. Uh, one, two, three, four. It says five. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. Did we miss something with the timing? Apparently... There's four ships on the way back with Iridite core frags. But it thinks there are five. I hope I'm missing some detail here. This is exactly what I was worried about. That there is... Oh, now it says four. One, two, three, four. Oh, I think I might know what it is. Did we actually catch it at the moment between... When this was plus one and the ship wasn't actually left the surface yet? No, I think we still would have seen the green chests. But we waited just a little while and checked it again and the count was right. I don't... There, there was nothing down here. I don't understand what just happened. Uh... But I'm tentatively relieved it seems to be keeping count correctly. Hormonite core frags should say four ships. That's five. Oh, it is five. It just changed. Nice, nice, nice. So at Plato orbit, the ship literally just left. Cool. Um, didn't I make a shortcut for this? There we go. Next, we'll check on Vitamelange. One, two, three, four. Looks good. Copper. Should say three. Yes. Uh, purple stuff. Three. Looks good. Yeah, I think it's working. I... I don't like that it was a mystery why Iridite Corfrag count looked to be wrong for a minute there, but it does all seem to be keeping up correctly. Uh, and it seems like it hasn't drifted at all over a long period of time. Cool. 
Kranus Orbit. Oh, it did just bump up to three. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, seems to be working. Very nice. It feels almost weird to be able to just take it for granted now that it's uh, operating smoothly. After it took so many iterations and so much misery to get it all working right. And at a casual glance, uh, it seems like all of our core frags in the base are pretty much... Um, okay, Vidim Lunge is not pretty much saturated all the time. Are we keeping up with the actual outposts, or is it that we need more spaceships? There's only 72k at Moss Garden. Bombato? 179,000. Okay. That's definitely enough that we should be sending ships there. Currently there's no ship on the way to Bombato. And Picard... No ships are coming. 239,000. So... We could add more ships to the system. Uh, and if we're not keeping up with Vidim Lunge, if we're spamming Bioscience, then we're going to need to do that. But for the most part... Um, it seems to be keeping up, and Vidim Lunge is the most thirsty. Stones actually... We're not keeping up with stone, not that I'm worried about that. Uranium is fine. Uh, and I think mineral water is actually a shortage based on just the one outpost. Yeah, there's only 41k core frags here. Uh, luckily, we're converting loads of matter into mineral water, so it's not really a problem. Come to think of it, I think I haven't bothered expanding the drills on Sage too much. We can count them just very casually looking at it. Yeah, there's only nine here, so we could easily expand that if we really want to. Uh, but yeah, ship system seems to be working quite well. Did we empty this? We did not. Is science still moving? It looks like it is. Wub, wub, wub. Fantastic. We're up to 18% on this 1 million cost research. Okay. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, you're supposed to be retired. Let me through. Boop, boop, and furthermore, boop. What else have we got lying around? I should really reclaim all of this. I feel like the ship belongs in a museum, though. We could go land it on Hagen or something. Or just leave it here. Is 
Is that scented? Uh, close enough. Now it needs some power. This feels nice, just tidying up a bit. Yeah, we don't really need these clamps for these old things. Um, how about we just get rid of this? Don't need no more stinking liquid rocket fuel. Got some old copper core frags here. How about... Take those downstairs. And we'll sort it out from the mall. Or I could just grab this and make it drop off. Wait, no. We don't normally have a drop off over here. For the copper core frags. It comes straight out of the ship. Looks like we're doing fine for copper. Just as I... Just as it occurred to me to check on it. Since we're spamming so many more circuits now. Speaking of which, I didn't tag these. Green, red, rot, aka, processing unit. Uh, Are we starting to saturate red circuits? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, it doesn't look like it at all. Hmm. I really don't want to have to do like a different shaped build just to just to accommodate more red circuits specifically. But maybe I should. The ratio here... I was looking for copper cable. Well, this is a tier 6 module, so a little bit negative on copper cable. Totally fine for green circuits. Hmm. 96 out of 31. Oh, sorry, 31. 31 out of 96. So we could double or triple the red circuits if it was stealing the greens from here, but we'd be short on copper cable. I really don't want to have to redesign that. Oh, is this not being used yet? Oh, it is. I just forgot to tag it. This one... Yeah, we did all this. Okay, so this is... Heat shield, LDS, rocket control unit, and solid rocket fuel. Low dense. Rocket control unit. And SRF. And on this side, AI core, energy control unit. Wrong one. Energy control unit. What was the other one? Space probe rocket and NAC crystal. There we go.
And I'm pretty sure we haven't used the southern side of this one. Cool, cool, cool. How empty are these? Uh, getting there. Not so much on this side, I guess. What's all this then? Old oil? We can decon that. Tidy that up. And I still haven't picked up this either. That's going to take a few trips. Hmm. I could just like... Shove it into another train station. Make that purple, so that the construction train is going to not have to go out of its way. Put this over here. Uh, let's get the train over here already. Wait till full. This is already gone. Mr. Combinator. And a pipe. Sloppy. Alright. Let's make that a provider. And coal goes in here. No, not that. We're gonna get we're gonna be full, aren't we? No, that's fine. Now the construction bots are hovering. Uh why do we have no power here? There we go. And priority... Yes. Alright. That'll get sent wherever, and then there'll be the dregs of it left over, and we'll come and decon it. Seems good. These guys should start moving as soon as there's an empty spot for them in the cargo wagon. There we go. Middle cargo wagon is almost full. Not quite. Oh yeah, I was going to redesign purple stuff. Okay, um, so we need a couple of these. A couple of these. That's all just one recipe. And maybe plate as well. Okay, I'll just remember plate. Because we need a newer furnace anyway. And this should be an advanced chemical plant as well. 
also that one. Okay. So raw emesite becomes crushed. Crushed becomes sulfite and doesn't go anywhere else. Yes. Uh, this also spits out sand. These two want the fluid. And then we need to bring in one more fluid. So one solid, one fluid input. Uh, one solid, two fluid inputs so far. Sulfuric acid as well. Um, what is it called? Nitrogen is just produced on the spot. We just use a condenser. Or not? Wait, what? Oh, it's an output. Never mind. Yeah, we just need to vent it. How fast are these at venting? 50 per second. That's without a module. So, much faster than using the fluid isothermics. Um, let's see. Blair stack. Okay, so we need input, 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 uh, delete sand. And then powder goes here. We need raw emesite powder that comes from here. And this also consumes raw emesite powder. And I'm pretty sure that's it. The raw emesite powder. Uh, we could also use it for improved pollution filter. Anti-creep capsule. We did make a few of those. Uh, I think. I think it was a prereq for... Nothing. Good old nothing. Uh, let me just check. It was over here. Yeah, we do need fine emesite powder. Anti-creep virus capsule is a prereq for anti-biter virus capsule. Not sure if we'll be using any more of these this run, but uh, exporting the fine emesite powder to the rail network makes sense for at least one purpose. There's also immersium beam, which I kind of overlooked. Uh, that doesn't happen in one of these. Immersium beam. No, that's just immersium plate. None of these use the powder. What was I just looking at? Fine immersite powder. Right click. Improved pollution filter, capsule... Uh, there is an alternate recipe. For immersium beam. It uses rare metals. And we should probably be using it. Because... We need to get the immersite powder from off-planet. Or the immersite. And rare metals we've always got too much of. Same goes for immersium gear. I am assuming here, of course, that we save imasite by using these. Silicon fine imasite powder. Wait, what? Oh, this is to make the crystals. 
yeah. I think... I'm still trying to figure out where to draw the lines for different rail blocks. So we definitely don't want to export this to the train. Uh, and I'm thinking probably immersium sulfide. We want to avoid exporting. It's used to make crystal. We've already got that here. Yeah, crystal and powder are the only uses. So really, all of this should be in one block, and then probably export the fine emosite powder. And don't worry about it after that. Seems good. So we've got one solid input, two fluid inputs, one desired solid output, and two actually, uh, two junk solid outputs or byproducts. Uh, I kind of wanted to do. Oh, this does use the rare metals. Hold on. There's only one recipe for the Mercium plate, I think. Right? Yeah. But for beams... There's only one. What? I'm so confused. I thought I saw... Yeah, there are two recipes. Wait, what? Immersium beam. Find immersite powder rare metals. Or just immersium plate. Six powder makes one. Or two immersium plate makes one. Which is 64 powder. Oh, makes four. So 32, 16... Um, immersion beam. Why can't I find this? FNEI says advanced assembly machine only for this version of the recipe, immersion beam, and any kind of assembly machine this version and we have researched it immersion beam bracket recipe uh is it under like a different category or something the recipe is under a separate category in advanced assembler smelting crafting here we go thank you yeah, I was starting to think I needed, like, crafting combinator to find it or something. Uh, and gear wheel as well. Okay. So that's, uh, that's got to save Immers uh, Immersi, right? Or at the cost of our unbelievably cheap rare metals. And there's only one recipe for Immersium plate, just to double check. Nope, just one. Okay, so 32 makes 4, 16, 8. 8 powder makes 1. So this is 16 powder. And this is 6 powder. Less than half the imacite. Nice. Not sure it's worth, you miss out on efficiency. What do you mean? What kind of efficiency? Is it slower? 1.666 per second. Oh, it's a lot slower. That's the only thing. But it means it costs less a uh, spaceship. Yeah, I think it's a quarter. It's exactly a quarter the speed. 
but I have a feeling we don't need that much Immersium Beam. Um, I mean, this has been saturated since we built it, but that's not too surprising. We made it kind of big. Um, over the last 50 hours, just to get a ballpark, Immersium Beam, 21.4 per minute. So if we assume, like, double that or so... This is 3.3k per minute. Uh, if we go tier 9 modules... However many it takes... What? That was weird. Uh, plus 800 percent. No bubba. Minus 80 percent. Okay, so we're looking at 202 per minute. From one machine. So we'll probably just do like three machines. Direct insert from train stops. Three machines is 607 per minute. Uh, and we had what was it? 21 per minute over the last 50 hours. So yeah, I dare say we can get away with using the the more resource efficient recipe. Cool. So what about um, Immersite Gear Wheel is probably the same. We pay... Four plate. Which is 32 powder. Ignoring prod modules. Versus three powder. Wait, really? What? Or Immersium Gear with Oh, oh, this is one-to-one. -one. That makes a bit more sense. And this is just one. So it's going to be way slower, right? It's a quarter the speed again. But I'm sure that'll be fine. Immersium Gear Wheel, 50 hours, 147 per minute. And this is 1.2k per minute from one machine. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. So we use the more efficient, slower recipes for those. Um, what was this supposed to be? I don't... I don't know. Can we prod that? We cannot. So we'll probably only need one machine for this. Um, and that's not prodable either. Okay. But yeah, we'll probably just export powder to the rail network. Oh, the reason I wanted to do th this next to this was because they have the same uh they have the same byproduct. So that would be four different things in the one rail block with uh, let's see. Sulfur. Atomic Nature, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How's your stream today? Oops. Um... Go 
goes there. And this goes here. And fluid goes here. Stream was okay. How's your go uh, yours going? Not bad, thanks. We're looking at completely overhauling Immersium. Um, and, and I'm thinking about how much I can put into one block to skip some train trips. There's only two destinations for Immersium Sulfide, for instance, so I want to just put that in the same block. Uh, it makes sense to export fine Immersite powder, but these two have the same byproduct, so I kind of want to put those together. Um, and this is plate. Where the heck is it? There it is. And this is crystal. Okay. So if we did all of this in one rail block, we would have one solid, two fluids for input from the train network. Three, three sol uh, sorry, two solids, two fluids for input from the train network. And two desired solids and one byproduct, or two byproducts. So two, 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 and two. Two solids, two fluids in, four, four solids out. I think we can make a pretty neat rail block to do that. Let's just keep our notes over here. What is all this? Random sulfur on the floor. Fel Felisan, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so step one goes up here. I haven't even looked at the ratios yet, but if we're going for minimum number of machines, some of them are going to be a bit off anyway. So we're going to do... Well, how fast is just one of these machines? With top tier beacons, with the usual layout. Consumes 20 raw emisite per second. I can't exactly look at the graph for how much raw emisite we've consumed over the last X hours to get an idea because it's going to count where we consumed it to turn it into matter. Um. We know that this has been sufficiently overkill. And this is 2.30 per second. Hmm. Oh, this has low tier prods in it still. Okay, so 18 per second. I don't know how much is enough. <sighs> okay, what about... What about looking at how much... Crushed Immersite we've been producing. That's a good way to do it. Crushed Immersite. Last 50 hours. 2k per minute. So if we imagine 4 or 5... That's probably a good target. Per minute. Wow. This one machine almost keeps up with our old build. Uh, okay then. Why don't we just do three of these? 
and input is quite slow. We could just use inserters, or we could belt it. Inserters will take from these two sides evenly. And then I think we'll do our sand output up here. And I think on the right side, we'll probably do sulfur output. Okay. So we're not picking up uh, sand, oh, sorry, crushed emesite with a train. That goes straight into this and only this, which doesn't need, uh, which can't use prod modules. So I, I fully expect that just one machine is all we're going to need to keep up with this. And yes, yes it is. Probably don't even need like the speed modules in that machine. All right, so why don't we put sulfuric acid? What's your rate? Less than 17 per second. Fantastic. So we'll just drop it off this way. That looks naff. And let's put this here already so we can visualize what we have, what we need, and where. So then sulfuric acid is just gonna connect like so. And then we have Emosite uh, Sulfide. Uh, I'm realizing we can't direct insert diagonally, or at least not with these mods. So I guess we'll just kind of want to do this. You know, I. I kind of want to not use inserters. Can we move this down a couple of tiles? And then this goes here, close enough. And I guess we'll do it like this. Need a filter on these. Almost forgot about the sand. How fast is the sand? It's only 33 per second. Oh, correction. It's like a quarter of a stack per second. So... 40, 80, 160. It would take... Two and a half minutes or so to fill up this container here. So we could just put it straight in here for the like balancing. I don't think we need to worry too much about big storage for this particular byproduct. It might be a little bit neater if, if I can put this up here, that goes down, and that way, direct belts can go here, we're looking for crushed emesite. Uh, 
and nothing else. Yeah, I kind of like this better. Symmetry. Oh, um, I almost forgot. We're trying to make room for this one to output sand. And how much sand is it? Max speed for all of these? Slightly more than a half belt. Hmm. That pipe is actually a little bit inconvenient. I could always rotate this. I was thinking of doing the fluid consumers on this side anyway. So this would go like here. That's kind of awkward. Might just have to do a little bit more pipe. What if... Sand goes here. I guess I could move this down like another tile. Or alternatively, the reason I moved the pipe. Oops. And then like this. What the? No, bad. Um, we don't really need like a splitter to merge properly. Because the whole thing barely, at top tier modules, uh, spits out a bit more than half a belt. So we could just do it like that. And then this goes here. We could still... well, no, we can't. There's not quite any room to do the pipe connection up here. Or to... To make it crisscross. I guess we could do it like this, really. Alternatively, we could make this fit a little bit differently. That doesn't really work. Unless... We put this over here, that might be simpler. Also easy to look at. So we'll just put this straight through here. Uh, and we would need... How about... Now oh, there isn't quite room for what I want there. That doesn't quite work either. And um, 
Why don't we just do something like this? Didn't need to overcomplicate it. And this way they're actually sharing the size of the belt equally. If we ignore the fact that the middle loader will have a side preference, but it's fine. This is fine. Alright, so we have our Immersium Sulfide. Next is... Uh, we need... Nitric Acid. To join with our Immersium Sulfide over this side. And... We might just do it this way. since these two connectors are like this, and I really doubt that we're going to need more than one machine for this, because, again, we can't use prod modules. So how much, um, how much does this support? We're getting 48.6 per second. Forty eight point six per second. So it's about a hundred emosite sulfide per second. And this can consume one forty seven, not as much as I thought, but still more than we need. And what was the other consumer? This one. I think we're going to need more pulverizers, honestly. For the first step. No, 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 we calculated already. This can do 2.9k... Crushed emosite per minute, which is almost three times what we've been doing. We want to keep the machine count down. Therefore, we'll just do kind of a minimalist build over here. We do want to export fine emosite powder to the rail network. And crystal and sulfur. And I thought there was one more? Oh, there was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of like... One, two, three, four. That'll do. At first I was imagining all of the solid outputs spread out here, 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 and here. That's not necessary. We might even still have way more space left than I anticipated, so maybe... Maybe we even try and squeeze in some of this stuff? In the same block? Especially if we only need one machine. Or a couple for each of these. That would mean we could do all of our Emosite stuff in one place. I think? Yeah, probably. So this doesn't consume crystals, it consumes powder. 
All three of these need rare metals, though, as well. So I'd have to make a drop-off for that somewhere. Let's just finish this build and see what we've got left. So we do need Immersite Crystal. Uh, no, this makes Immersite Crystal. What am I saying? Uh, what we need is Silicon. That was the other solid that needs dropping off. So that's going to come from here. Um... If I just put this right about here... We could direct belt. There's only one consumer in this block of silicon, right? So that goes there. Uh, that's pretty awkward. Maybe I will rotate this. I mean, that lines up perfectly. Uh, we do need a flare stack. Can probably just put it under the beacon, don't need any other modules. If this goes full speed, it's 92 nitrogen per second. Uh, and I can't tell what this gets rid of until we do this. Three twenty-five per second. Okay, cool. So we definitely only need one of those. And on this side, we need a drop off. Wait. What the heck was I thinking with this? Uh. Just turn that around there. I guess. We need a drop off for not this. Uh, what was it called? Nitric acid. Nitric acid. And that's going to go in here. One off. Awkward. I guess it's going to be something like this. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. How many crystals does this make, actually? 12.9 per second, or 7.77 per minute? How much have we been producing or consuming? Somehow I think a little bit more. Let's find out. 50 hours, 518 per minute. So we're probably looking for a thousand or something. So we need like two of these. How much does this consume? Only 48 per second. And this can do 173. Hmm. So it can't support even this machine by itself. Oh yes it can. 147 per second. Wait, how much is all this? It's only a little bit negative on Immersium Sulfide if both of these are going full tilt, which they won't be overall. So maybe uh, how much powder is this again? 
147 per second. Damn. What stack size does it have? A hundred. So it's more than a stack per second from this one machine. That makes me really want to direct belt it um, to do these three builds in the same block, even though we'll still be exporting some of the fine imosite powder. Um, but yeah, we might actually need multiple machines for crystals. Uh, anyway, that's going to be it for today. Let's see. Let's sue? What? Uh, no sue jitsu. Let's see who we're raiding today. Factorio... Diablo, perhaps? There's SE mod, but it's in Japanese. Uh, Hofnix. How, lo how long has it been since we raided Hofnix? Thanks for sharing. Uh, thanks for dropping by Cap Tree. And everyone else as well. Including all you lovely lurkers. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And until next time, stay safe. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Ian Noah. Uh, that'll be it for Factorio for this week. Tomorrow, uh, probably just chilling out with some Slay the Spire Packmaster. Although, I say chilling out. It is at A20. But there are some strong cards. But also you need to get several packs together that have some synergies. Anyway, let's go. And X, as I said, right, it's one over here, zero here.